right, hello everyone, and welcome to session five of the Wrath and Glory game Depths of Trollius. Uh, don't really have much in the way of announcements tonight, other than the fact that I'm trying out the whole VTubing thing, so that's why Ignatrix is standing in for my webcam tonight. But uh, yeah, let's just go around and have uh, everyone introduce themselves and we can get this show going. So starting with Brother Harad. Hello again. Uh, my name is George. I'll be playing Brother Harad, the Dark Angels Primary Space Marine. Um, if you like me for some reason, you're crazy, but you can find more of me on Twitter at Strom12341 and uh, YouTube at StromPlays. Alrighty, up next we have uh, Sister Kranz. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Eric and I play Sister Kranz. Um, Sister Rosenkranz is a Sister of Battle and you can find me everywhere at Eric Vulgaris. All right, up next is Torvian. My name's Ben. I'm playing Torvian, a rather sarcastic Imperial Guardsman medic. And last but not least, we have Corporal Shank. Yes, I'm playing uh, Corporal Jillian Shank, um, an Inquisitorial agent. So if you are crazy about finding me on the internet, good luck. <sighs> I love it. All right, let's run the quick introduction and we'll get this show on the road. Alrighty. So, as uh, you may know as the norm, I like having players do an opening log or a monologue of some sort to sort of recap events. And uh, Torvian, I think you have that this week. Yep, it is my turn. <clears throat> Let me get into character. Oh, it's the exact same. Sorry. These walking corpses are everywhere. I got the Vox working again, and we managed to contact some survivors trapped in a nearby hab block and besieged by the corpse army. With some help from Brother Harad, I managed to get a local transport running, and we headed out to save as many living humans as we could. That's where we met Salili. She was the sole protector of about 30 others, and as soon as I got anywhere near her, my skin just started to crawl. Salili told us about the strange black snow that's coming from the governor's spire, and that there's a direct maglev track from this hab block, but the tram isn't working. We contacted Veronius using the Vox unit, which... I repaired and set up an evac for the women and children. Our Lara, our tag along Xenos, led the civilians out under Veronius' orders, and Salili decided to join us in storming the governor's spire. Up the stairs, we. I hesitate to say sprinted because there were a lot of stairs, but we did end up on the penthouse floor, and I got to work on the maglev using parts from Brother Harad's shield unit. And of course, we got attacked by more of the Frozen that we, as we've started calling these zombie abominations. A firefight ensued, quite literally. Most of the Frozen we killed were destroyed by detonating barrels of Prometheum on them. The tram did get repaired, by yours truly, of course. And now we're on the way to the Governor's Spire. Oh, and Shank mentioned that Silly is something called a Null or a Pariah, but I don't think that's got to be very important. All righty. And you may have uh, one glory to uh, start things off. So uh, we're going to sort of go theater of the mind for a little bit, as you all are currently on the maglev train uh, headed towards the tallest spire. The track of the maglev sort of angles upward at a slight incline. And just based on the distances between that hab block and the spire in question, you hardly even notice the fact that at one point you're actually going at like a 45 degree angle. Um, but yeah, I wanted to give you guys a chance to discuss and perhaps plan uh, before you actually arrived. So take it away. You are muted, Eric. I was muted because of the dogs. Real quick, out of character now, group. Do we know what this place is gonna look like when we get there? Like at the top of the tower. It's going to look like a hab spire with smoke billowing out of the top. Right. Okay. That's about oh, all the gonna be good. <laughs> so we're going at, so we're just getting off this train blank. So we should be ready for battle. So I guess maybe while the train's going around in character or whatever, um, I'm taking the moment here to uh you know, the sister's looking over her gun, uh, making sure the bolter doesn't jam like it did that one time. 
um, mm-hmm. back in the in the medical spot. Uh, I think I might go to uh, uh, like, not probably my brother or Rod. Um, yeah, uh, maybe. And uh, I'll ask. I'll ask, kind of ask the brother what we should expect. Um, so like that, we have that shot of like kind of looking at the, the we hear the the rumble of the the maglev train, right? And we see our like kind of reflections from the half mirror as things are like whooshing by. Um, you know. so brother, what do you think we should expect when we get there? As I finish like cocking the gun. Mm, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if there was another thousand suns traitor. And who knows what kind of foul creatures they could have dragged from the warp. Most likely more frozen. We should what say be ready. You... And what say you, Corporal? Agent. Agent. But thank you Agent. for remembering my cover. Well, whatever it is. I rate our chances around 20%. We're probably not going to make it out of life. But if we do, well, bless the Emperor, I suppose. No. There's no shame dying for a good cause now. And the... A life lived in service is the best life you can live. Well said. Uh, I imagine there's a spot here. Um, our poor medic is not believing that <laughs> or something. I don't know. What do you What do you have to say for yourself, Ben? Uh, we have enemies upcoming. Um, uh, I'll, I'll stand in the back and pull whoever falls down to safety and try to get them back on their feet. Uh, so Lily sort of raises a hand and says, um, yeah, about that. Um, should I be hiding behind big guy over here? And she points that's, at Brother Harad. That's my hiding spot. You can hide behind me. Well, he's large enough. He'll fit. Uh... Just don't hide around me. Please. And uh, Slily actually gets a uh, almost like a playful expression, and she just she doesn't actually like run up and hug you or anything, but she just steps a little bit closer just to see that sweat on your brow, and then winks and steps on back. Don't make me vaporize you. I will. And she sort of holds up her hands and says, "All right, all right, just trying to lighten the mood a little." Well, that sweat on my brow is quite real. I've got a headache being close to a blank. So what yeah. is a blank, anyways? Yeah, we, we keep using this word. She has no presence in the warp. In fact, she has an aura of, well, nothing. The warp creatures, dozens of the warp can't see her. My power's barely manifest around her and my presence around her is agony it physically pains me to be around her in fact even those who are not blessed by the warp's touch are troubled in some way in her presence yeah so like out of character i feel like the only thing i heard was mutant (laughs) yeah well (laughs) yeah it's a mutant gene uh, out of character, so it, it, yeah, in character. Just, yeah, see, so some kind of. Are you saying she's a mutant? Yes and no. Audibly, if scowled. you want to purge this mutant, <laughs> I wouldn't advise it. It's... And why it's is that, as... agent? Uh, out of character, I think that this is where you refer to them as an ab human instead of a mutant. Because it is a officially recognized and generally accepted as necessary, just like Ogrins. And oh, no, no, they just, are? I, this is actually a lore thing yeah, I don't know. So yeah, okay. so um, I was going to explain that um, this type of mutation is sanctioned, and I don't require to execute or set, punish uh, the said creature. Hmm. Uh, in fact, out of out of character. Um, Knolls have been used in Inquisitor uh, uh, retinues as very important characters, and plus, uh, there's yeah, a very big Eisenhorn, etc. There's Ooh. a very big uh, Inquisitor, well, not Inquisitorial, uh, Imperial um, wing. Assassinorum. There's also the Assassinorum, but you've also got the Sisters of Silence, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. have 
instrumental in keeping the Imperium, Imperium running. They, they operate the black ships. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, well, may, my ignorance is uh, Rosencrantz's own ignorance here. Um, so thank you for the, the lecture. Hmm. Well, sanctioned or not, she better be careful. Uh, I, ELH. Yes. Would Harad be able to like rip apart some of the uh, the metallic structure of the maglev and use his uh, power sword to like spot weld armor plating together? You know, that's an inventive enough idea that I'm going to let you try it. I think that's a very fun idea. Um, so I would just like to paint a picture of Brother Harad after hearing this lesson, just sort of goes over to one of the side of the rail cars. And I, I'm imagining like an old like subway car like you might find in New York. And yeah. he's literally just taking his power sword and ripping up seats and pulling off panels of the wall. And then just like spot welding best he can with his power sword. I um, thought a seat. That's a dead hobo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> Oh, Lord. So let's take a look at Brother Harad's sheet here. What can we have you roll? Um, how would you feel about a tech check? Um, well, uh, better than deception or insight. Okay. Well, I can give him some pointers. Could I help? <laughs> yeah. Could I, could I help with? I don't know. Would this be like a survival to like help you scrounge the best bits and then a tech to do it? Could I maybe like give you a, a plus one or effect if I help you with survival? Or no? Yeah, you know what? That's, and kind of make uh, this like a little linked thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually a good idea. So why don't we do a first roll yeah. of survival, and then if you guys succeed on the survival, yeah. then I'll give you bonus die on the tech check. Well, I. Well, that's that's I think a good I start. Succeeded. <laughs> I think that's what the DN was. Uh, but I just. Well, I think I you put... give him a number of dice equal to your success. Oh, is it? I, it's not. I'm, that's not, that's how a system works. I I mean, yeah, I've been I've been reading some other systems lately, and uh, since we last played, um, I've been getting some rules bleed. I was like, oh, you could just get a plus one for helping. Uh, but I'm 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 totally off. Well, then that I don't know what the DN was for. The DN survival. is sufficiently oh, it's, three. It's a nine. Yeah. <laughs> Can I yeah. spend these two uh, these two uh, sixes? Also, uh, yeah, you can push both of those sixes. Oh, yeah, Actually, you gain... can push three of those sixes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm going to gain one glory from the six. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to push one of the six to uh, get some more information, i.e. Um, like get parts, get, get pieces of the scrap metal that are slightly better, uh, you know, shaped for the human form, even the transhuman form. Mm -hmm. And then I'll push the, uh, the other six for just speeding it up. Okay. Oh. So uh, what I would say is that with Sister Krantz, uh, she actually displays, and feel free to interrupt and flavor it your own way, but I'd like to imagine Sister Krantz literally just kind of starts going over to Brother Hot and going, no, 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 that's that's not a structurally sound piece. You want actually that beam over there kind of a thing. So, yeah. Yeah, maybe I say something about the the carts and what they're made out of. Being like, uh, they use the tritanium in, you know, the, the, they use a ceramide hybrid in the in the base flooring here. You know, something like that, right? And yeah. um, how do you know no. so much about trams? I think that's um, a fair. You have to clean a lot question. of them in the in the in the <laughs> monastery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go, Sister Kronz Apparently had to do a cleaning detail on a few of them. There you I, go. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, uh, with that many successes can, on the survival, yeah. oh, go ahead. Sorry, uh, Brother Harad. May I make a suggestion? Uh, fictionally, is this because like armor might be a little hard to make, but the, could this be kind of like like a bulgurny like riot shield kind of thing, or, like. or or just rather have armor? I mean, it, effectively, it's the same. I just imagine piecing something together would make more sense if it was like a giant shield. But I mean, well, I would say character. that it's a good question because there's two ways we can go about doing this. Either um, we can do what you just suggested, and I believe there are actual stats for a shield. Um, yeah. Or what we do is instead of giving you armor, what I give you is essentially cover. And if you... Oh, yeah. I, mean, I didn't think there would be mechanical differences. Yeah, you're right. I, I, okay. 
yeah, let's sorry to open up that can of worms. No, I mean it's a it's oh. a perfectly valid can of worms to open. Um let me just quickly. So basically it would either be a cover. shield or it'd be a um oh what's the term? Ablative armor. Yes. Where every time it gets hit, it loses some of its defense rating. <laughs> chair flies off of it. The chair flies <laughs> off his shoulder or something. Uh let's see. Oh, and you could see. actually use that if the enemy gets a critical fail, they hit you. No damage is dealt, but a piece of your armor flies off and just demolishes one of his allies. <laughs> Pretty uh, funny. Actually, that's a good suggestion. I think given the amount of time that we have, uh, a shield would be much more effective, uh, would be a much more effective use of all the scrap rather than trying to make some sort of a blade of armor. Okay. Yeah, we can uh, certainly roll with that. Uh, go ahead and roll me your tech check, and based on how many survival successes you got, uh, I will give you a bonus of three dice. Um, I'm going to assist on the tech check as well. All right. So let me go ahead and roll that up really quick so that you know how many bonus dice you're getting. Complication. A lot of complications tonight. I love it. <laughs> That's what our group is known for. So you got six extra dice to roll. Unless you want me to be the one doing the fixing. Uh, right. Those six dice were completely useless. Thanks, though. I would say <laughs> you have not passed. You may wish to spend a wrath to re-roll. Um, you know what? That's a that's a real good idea. I'm going to spend that wrath. Um, do I re-roll? You the... can re-roll as many as you want that aren't. No, actually, I believe there is a limit now that I think about it. Let's quickly double check. No, he roll he rerolls all the ones that aren't successes, is what yeah. it is. I might be thinking of a different system then. I'm also getting rules bleed. Uh, let's just roll with it that yeah, you can reroll as many as you want except the wrath die. Well, he gets to reroll it. It's just he still has the complication from it. Correct. Okay, that includes all the the six extra, extra dice from the help. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. All right. Well, with the five, that is uh, enough. You uh, you have succeeded, uh, but also roll to see if you can push any. Oh, that's much better. Yeah. Two, so you six. could push those two sixes if you wanted to. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. I have so we cannibalized eight. your shield to, to to your your um refractor shield or whatever it was to make it so that the maglev worked. But now we're going to cannibalize part of the maglev to give that back to you. Yep. There's a bit of irony here. <laughs> just a little bit. Okay, so I have three sixes in total. Um, with the, So that's five, seven, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. So uh, two, can I push two or three of those? Two uh, you can push two. Okay. So can I push with six to be more effective and have a, an additional armor rating? Yeah. Uh, so I would say during this whole process of you spot welding, you know, the bits of chairs and uh, tritanium together, um, you end up with a shield that will provide you a grand total of three armor piercing or three armor is what I would say. Ooh. I like the three armor piercing better. Can we go with that? Just like there you go, a, uh, a piercing shield. <laughs> well, it's not really a defensive item. You just throw it at people. Oh, we're going Captain America now. There we go. <laughs> well, I don't mean like actually throwing it at people. It was like just smacking it on someone like a chair from WWE. <laughs> that would also work. With this? Can I get one of those chairs? <laughs> <laughs> this thing is basically a storm shield, but made out of pieces of the train. Mm -hmm. yeah. With nails on it. <laughs> I imagine it's only going to last for this one battle scene. Because it is kind of... Yeah, I was going to say, so this is this is kind of a temporary <laughs> weapon, but uh, once you're done with it and you're kind of all looking at his handiwork, uh, Salili goes over to Jackta and like rips a bit of his sleeve away from Jackta. And of course, Jackta complains. He's like, hey, what the hell are you doing? And Salili just goes, shh. And uh, she takes the bit of cloth and affixes it to the shield. And what you see is that this bit of cloth is actually the Imperial Double Eagle. So now you have the Double Eagle on your shield. Yeah. Also, you are completely correct, Eric, that it is technically orc powered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. So uh, with that done, um, I'm actually going to move us maps just because there's a lot to describe on this map.
And mm-hmm. it'll make sense once you see it. So, uh, as the tram begins to approach the highest spire, um, what you realize is that it actually circles around the spire and it does so in a manner that will drop you off to the east. Um, but what you're immediately noticing is that this spire is gigantic. Of course, befitting of a, uh, you know, a planetary governor's spire. Uh, but what you're noticing is that there are spokes uh, that sort of fan out towards landing platforms. Uh, there are a grand total of six, seven, eight. Uh, there are a total of eight spokes. And on six of them, you can see that there are uh, what appear to be power generators. And they are connected via these long cabling to what is essentially a quote-unquote dark snow generator. The thing that is spewing out the black snow. And that in and of itself is already a bit daunting. But as you're sort of circling in the, the maglev as it's kind of coming into station, what you realize is that there are gibbering masses of pink flesh just sort of floating about uh, as if they um, aren't exactly from this world, if you catch my meaning. Understood. So uh, I, do have a, I, I do have a really quick question. Yes. Concerning this, is, this is just from looking at what you've given us here and the information that you gave us regarding, regarding how gnolls work. Mm-hmm. How does a null work on an incoming psyker attack? So that would be psyker dependent attack. on the psychic attack in question. Like if they tried to do, um, I forget the pyrokinetic power, but basically if they tried to do a melt beam, the melt beam would be reduced. Um, but if it's something like they're hurling a box at you, you know, it's not going to stop the box's momentum, if that makes any sense. Right. That was more because um, warp fire. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, the warp fire will be reduced in damage, but it will still kind of go through because she's she's not a true pariah. She is just a blank. Okay. 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 So is this other quick question? So this is mm-hmm. uh, could we imagine there's a lot of like these giant suspension sort of uh, like co- I guess transmission coils going from the generators going up into this generator in the middle. Correct. Yes. So okay. the cables so it's like are. Double O Seven satellite situation. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay. Um, right, if if giant. I had to sort of quantify um, how thick the cabling and how thick the structures are, um, the generators are probably about three meters by or no four meters by four meters. Um, so they're very si- sizable okay. generators, um, and they are supported by probably too thick of struts for even a power sword to cut through, like you would be there a while kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, these right here. Or uh, what, what let those? me zoom out. Where are you pinging? Your video game brain is sensing that there are things that are tubular and red. Yes. <laughs> Therefore they explode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, uh, there are Promethean canisters um, because what you're realizing as you circle in is that these generators are in the place of where actual vehicles would come and land. So... Presumably, they have Prometheum tanks there to refuel vehicles and sky vehicle or sky vehicles aircraft. Um, so well, it, yes, technically, yes, they are Prometheum, but whether or not they have anything in them, that is something you're going to have to find out on your own. And what's the distance on that? Um, uh, if I did it correctly, everything should be correct distance wise. Yeah, it looks like everything is set up as it should be. So if you use your arrow tool, it should tell you. Oh, but uh, the other important thing, the cabling for the generators, um, they are probably as thick as Brother Harad. Like, if you were to imagine Brother Harad was a circular tubular cable, that is exactly how thick the cabling is. So you could conceivably cut through all of them with a power sword you would just take a little bit to do so. Awesome. Hey, Brother Rod, bro, George, go ahead and grab that uh, token. That was from the glory from my role. I know you're the one who's going to hold all the glory, so go ahead and okay. just grab it. Yeah. And did you grab one for my intro? Uh, No. Okay. Sorry, we're like getting all of our... We need, we need, we're going to need as much power as we can for this fight, so we're just making sure it's, it's all available for us. No, take all the time you need. All right. And we all have our wrath back, right? 
Yes, you all have your wrath back. Except me. Session. I spent one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, actually, Salili's going to sort of point out one of the uh, pink horrors, because out of character, I don't mind telling you they're pink horrors, uh, but sort of points at one of the pink, gibbering masses of flesh and goes, okay, what the hell is that? A foul well, spawned. Uh, who cares? Kill it! And... <laughs> Alright. So, so, are we on a... Where we land here, are we on a flat plane? Are we elevated up above the others? Are we... uh, this is all flat. Like, all of this is flat. So if you will kind of imagine like a bowl, that the center is a bowl, and then it has spikes or spires coming out in an eight-pointed eight star. Um, that is basically the layout. Everything is flat here. But uh, let me actually use a tool you can see on stream. So like between here and here... Like, between here is just open air. Um, it sort of drops down to a lower floor. Um, so you can't just, like, go directly across these platforms. Like, you have to go to the middle or attempt some sort of a, an athletics check to jump the gap, if that makes any sense. But everything okay. is flat here. So I could technically move to this spot right here. Mm -hmm. So right here, and I would be within six meters of this so i could just try taking pot shots at that to see if it'll explode correct okay but yeah uh what i'm gonna say is that the maglev finally does its final spiral of this uh spire and it comes to a stop and the doors open and as the doors open uh there's just this little sort of automatic servitor voice that says please watch your step and have a pleasant day because of course everything in the spire has to tell you to have a good day no, the I'm going to roll in athletics to make sure I don't stumble when I get, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you really want. <laughs> no, I don't, because I'll give you extra freaking wrath, and I'll, I'll fall on my face, and my non-grenades <laughs> will tumble out and explode on me. Uh, well, you know, you only lose, uh, <laughs> what was it, another canteen? So I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> All right, um, so, uh, important question. Oh, go ahead, Eric. No, I mean, I was going to say in character, like, this is the first time, like, we, we see it in person. It's one thing to see this sort of, like, smoke billowing thing. You know, this is kind of like seeing the Eye of Mordor from a distance on this maglev. But when you're actually here, you know, it's, like, something more to the effect of, you know, by the, by the Emperor. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is, this is, the, we're going to, we're going to test ourselves for a minute. So I want to give our, ourselves a quick little speech here. And by that, I mean a little, like, pithy uh, sister of battleism um, okay. before we begin, which would be... Uh, Remember, your duty is to knock down that generator. You are forbidden to die until it's done. Which generator? There's like seven. I'm I'm pointing towards the giant one billowing black smoke, right? You're okay. we're taking that down, and you're not going to die until it's it's down. Okay, agent's going to stand up and go. Okay, this is it. This is the center of the her spire, source of all heresy in this hive. What you're going to see is... Hmm? Anybody have a grenade I can borrow? Not right now, but what you're about to see is I'm going to defy your interpretation of reality. Well, what you do here will save this planet if you succeed. If not, well, it won't matter. We'll all be dead anyway. But know that the Emperor is watching. Or the Emperor. A spirit of Dominatus Domini Libro Nos. <laughs> Our Emperor, deliver us. Oh, if uh, if I wouldn't get banned on Twitch or YouTube for actually playing it, I would actually play yeah. that song. I would totally do it. But yeah. Remember, the Emperor condemns. The Emperor protects. The Emperor delivers. Can I have a grenade? <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Jackta actually uh, reaches into his pack and says, here, uh, you can have my last grenade. You yes. are a grenade. <laughs> um, I can't jump that far. I can throw <laughs> this. <laughs> You'll know when the time comes. <laughs> oh, the Emperor! And I'm going to come right over here and chunk a grenade right there. All right, so before we get to the start of the attack here, um, I do need to ask some important questions. Uh, namely, how do you guys want to do initiative this time? Do you want to do you guys enemy, you guys enemy, or do you want to actually do initiative? 
Yeah, I think since specific timing isn't super important, mm-hmm. we can do a normal initiative. Okay. Yeah. In that case, uh, let's get a turn order going, and we can get everybody on it. I'm acting in the surprise round, dang it. All right. <laughs> so, zoom in so I can actually get all of you. All That's right. not right. How do you roll initiative in this? Oh, of course, I forgot to clear the list. Hold on. There yeah. we go. Ba- default default isn't rolling initiative. Default is just uh, players go, um, enemies go. Right. And we alternate unless we spend oh. glory or be ruined vis a vis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's be clear. Which would you guys prefer? <laughs> standard. The non roll. Yeah, the standard non rolling. Standard non rolling. Got it. All right. So. Know, okay. Is that cool uh, with you, Agent? It's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I have uh, everybody in the order, and uh, I think it would be thematic uh, for Jack to, to go first, um, simply because, as I said, I was going to redshirt him. So uh, Jack to steps off of the maglev and sort of gets a little bit ahead of everybody, and he sort of peers really closely at the generator, and he kind of calls back over his shoulder, Hey, guys! there's some sort of force field or something over the generator i think uh it's we're probably gonna have to take out uh, some sort of power loss to this thing for us to even scratch it and uh i will actually spend some ruin for this but as he's saying this that closest pink horror is going to basically conjure up this pink ball of fire and launch it at jackta and because we all know he's being redshirted in this moment um, the even with it within Salili's aura, um, you see the warp fire literally impact Jacta in the chest, and it burns a hole right through. Like you can see through the hole in his chest, and he sort of looks down, looks back at all of you, opens his mouth to say something, and then stumbles toward the edge and falls into the void. Jacta is no more. Dang it! If he didn't fall off. I would have spent a glory to, to 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 insert a story element that we had a replacement heart in my med kit. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit much. Might be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is now y- your real turn if you would prefer. Yeah. Okay. So Absolutely. I'm gonna toss a grenade right here. Okay. Come on, clicker thingy. Work with me here. Right in between okay. the two. That way, it hits both of them. Okay. Um, and I only need three successes to actually do that, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Space oh. Master. Um, mm-hmm. Is it like windy? Is it like snow everywhere? Is it like I knew I forgot something. So, is what's going on? So what's weather like here? On now that you're out onto the, out into the element, um, obviously, of course, you have the dark snow being billowed out of the generator in the middle. But there is, based on the altitude, there is um, whipping winds that almost tear at your clothing and uh, snow, regular snow and dark s- snow sort of mix together and otherwise make it so that you're not in a blizzard per se, but you're definitely in heavy winds is what I would say. Like if you were uh, to go outside in a hurricane, so you could sure. still walk around without really any penalties, but if you lose your footing, it could be very deadly. In a hurricane? You can't walk around normally in a hurricane. Depends on the force of the hurricane. Uh, maybe a tropical storm, but not a hurricane. Have not... A... You, you know what I mean. That's we, Yeah, we know. <laughs> Why are we debating? Let's go. I have a very right. important question. Yes. 42. Is there like lightning flashing in the sky? Um, You know what? Now that you look up and you observe the sort of dark snow cloud that is becoming uh, readily more apparent the more time goes on. Um, you are seeing a little bit of electricity crackling in the cloud hovering overhead. Yeah. So I have a I have a picture to paint with Brother Harad standing in front of the party and the the lightning flashing in the sky. One one lightning strike momentarily uh, outlines Brother Harad, and with his whipping cloak and shield and sword, for a brief moment, you get the impression that he is standing there in full power armor before this before the your vision returns. I tell you what, uh, I will give you a point of glory for that. That's awesome. I just thought Crap, it was a I'm cool... hallucinating. Yeah. I thought it was know, just getting... a cool... 
Yeah, I, know. I mean, to me in the sky, the first thing that goes to me is because I'm just a I'm, I'm a nerd. But like the first thing I think of would be like, uh, you know, like in the Elder Scrolls, like one of the um, anchors, oh, you know, uh, like all of like the, the that dark and tempestuous sky above you. I would it's probably uh, not the normal color Scrolls, of the sky. Uh, speaking of Elder Scrolls, you know how in uh, Oblivion, whenever you got near an Oblivion gate. How the sky overhead would change, kind of the same thing yeah. going on here. Yeah, that's yeah, no, that's exactly yeah, 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 yeah. That, that those vibes. Okay, same vibes. Mm -hmm. Awesome, cool. I mean, it's yeah. also very, very aptly forty k uh, oh, yeah. in, in those ways, right? Yeah. Or yeah. um, I mean, if it, if it, if you think that, imagine if the album art to ride the lightning was real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's it, like that's that's sort of what it is, in my head, at least. All right, so Torvian. Oh boy. Now, correct okay. me if I'm wrong. I believe that does mean we break out the scatter chart, correct? No, um, yeah, it, it can't bounce all the way back. So, unless it bounces further forward, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to fall into yeah, the void. Yeah, it's going to fall off. Yeah, that's what we need to check here is to see if it either falls into the void or bounces further in. That's another uh, D6 scroll, right? Yeah, well, I'm trying to find the chart real quick. Where um, is. Could you. Could you spend a wrath to potentially re-roll this the scattered die? Uh, I could spend a wrath to just re-roll what I just rolled. You could. Which I might as well. Rerolling right. that wouldn't re be a bad idea either. All right, four. No, I have is... six success. That might have been barely <laughs> enough. All right. So Torvian, you take this uh frag grenade and you chuck it through the uh, billowing wind. And you mark its progress as it comes flying down and lands in between the two Promethean canisters. And after a moment, the grenade explodes, sending shrapnel and fire everywhere. But when the smoke clears, or when the wind basically blows it out of the way, uh, what you see is that unfortunately, those tanks were empty. So, um, guys... Plan blow them all to hell is uh is, is a no go. That, that's a that that that's a no go. It's you may need to. Easy. You may need to get in close and use your technical expertise to disrupt them. Just kick the shit out of it. Do you think you could disable them if we get close? Speaking Probably, to yeah. Torvian, yeah. But just just keep the whatever those, well. those things are off of me. I can. I could disable it. I'm gonna brandish my plasma gun, plasma pistol. Yeah, I could disable it too. You want to try taking oh, a shot at the generator? <laughs> nope. I'm not the a big shot. one, the little ones. I'll take a shot at the pink horror. You're right, right in front of us. So you will have to spend uh, some glory to retain the initiative. Otherwise, yeah. it would go over to the pink horrors. I, will I was acting that. in the surprise round. No, you don't we... get a surprise action on these guys. Dang it! <laughs> Actually, before you they do that, saw, they saw us coming on this trap. <laughs> before you do that, um, if you're to spend a glory, can Brother Harad use the glory? Because I can make it's just within my charge range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. Oh, that'd be dope. I mean, both are dope. So, hold on. I am not using the select tool. So, here we go. It is exactly at two meters within my charge range. Yeah, right. Awesome. So, power sword, plus one bonus dice for the attack roll for charging. All right, how'd that shake out? That nice. is uh, eight successes, which means looking at your rolls, you could actually shift both of those uh, sixes if you wished. All right, well, I'll refill that glory. Okay. And then and I'll then... shift the other one for an extra damage die. Oh, we should have gotten a glory for my first roll, actually, for the grenade shot. Um, We're already at five, not a so. a total of four, not a total of six. Also, you know oh, what right. I just realized? Right. Um, I don't think this is going to matter in the grand scheme of things, but we do need to do a fear test for you guys seeing these pink horrors. Mm -hmm. So let's resolve um... your attack, and then we'll do the fear test. I don't um, need to is do it that. Fear test or is it a corruption test? Uh, it says it aura? is a fear. So we're probably gonna have to do both because we're actually getting exposed to demons now. Well, I think I think I will have to do the corruption test, but I definitely do not need to do the fear test because I'm immune to fear. 
Uh, so I, the, yeah, I bought the fearless much. trait when we started. All right. So let's see. So you take your power sword, and I'm going to flavor it as uh, you come in, uh, maybe sweeping low, and you come up uh, mid torso level and bifurcate the pink horror. But to your own horror, what happens is as the two parts begin to fall apart, they actually morph and change into two blue horrors. Uh-oh. Classic zinch bull crap. Brother mm-hmm. Rod screams. Ah! <laughs> All right, now let's do the fear test. Obviously, Sister Kronz, you're immune, so you're good. Um, I was but... wondering if I... I was looking at my sheet to see if I... I know everyone around me is going to have to do a fear test. I was wondering if I can give any benefits to fear tests for my purity of faith, but that's only psychic powers. So sorry, you're on your own. That's determination? On this sheet, yes. Addiction. It's determination? I thought determination is for your... um. Wound soaking. Conviction, I believe. Conviction is what we're supposed to be rolling, I thought. I always get them mixed up. Me too. Yeah. Um, oh, conviction or resolve it doesn't matter. I've got the same resolve now as me. So. I'll roll yeah, conviction. It, uh, I think you it, resolve against fear and your convictions against corruption. All right. So now, there's a resist like... corruption test as well, so what do I know? Well, it's one of the things we'll do the corruption test after the fact because during it's none of you are going to push over the barrier during. Sure. Um, so we'll wait to do the corruption. But so, I'm just trying to very I'm quickly find fear. Now. Let's see. I guess it would be under 190 because it looks like uh, Roll if your I resolve see... against a DN. Yeah, based on the on the monster, probably. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that's what I'm looking up. Here we go. Uh, da, 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 ally leader. Da, 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 da. Problem is, is I'm trying to see what happens when you are feared. What it actually. Oh, here it is. Plus in the quick two reference. DN to all tests. I mean. Yep. Found it. You could. Yeah. I think it's. Is it? What is it? DN plus two. Plus DN two plus DN two. to all tests. Yeah. All right. Against that particular. Uh, against oh, the result of, of what it means to be afraid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Like the condition of being afraid imposes a plus two DN. Gotcha. Correct. Yeah, my determination is much better than my conviction. <clears throat> All right. So I don't. I think it is determination, which is resolve, not uh, conviction. Yeah, so, looking at uh, it is resist resolve according to the quick sheet. Oh, it's resolve. Okay, mm-hmm. then mine will be even lower because I only have two resolve dice. All right. So yeah, brother Harad, go ahead and do yours. Um, it looks <laughs> like Shank is gonna fail unless he has more. Uh, no, my conviction and resolve are the same value, so uh, it doesn't really matter. All right, so Shank, I'm going to mark you. What are we going to mark you with? We'll mark you with uh, a snail. Actually, no, we'll do the paralyzing. All right, and then Brother Harad, you had more or less? Uh, I'm I'm trying to figure that out. Is resolve determination on this sheet? Or is I think it, it is. Conviction? That's where we get confused, is that on this sheet, I think it is the determination button. Okay. Okay, so Brother Harad's good. Kronz is immune. Uh, Torvian, you are also afraid. Mm-hmm. And then... Now, how are, have... Yes. Just really quick question here. Um, mm-hmm. So am I afraid of that particular pink horror? Or all of them? All of them. Okay, because the rules say it's the source of the fear. True. Um, but technically these That's guys are asking. supposed to be part of a mob, at least as I roll. But we're handling them like individual entities. Um, okay. Let's do it this way, um, because we already have blue horrors on the field. If you are afraid of a pink horror, you are not afraid of the blue horror. How about that? Uh, I want to push back on that. I okay. think there should be individual tests for each type of horror. Okay, fair enough. But uh, I'm I can be outvoted. No, I think individual tests for pink yeah. and individual tests for blue. But if you are feared of the pinks, a different pink horror is not going to be any less scary than pink, any yeah. other pink horror. Exactly. Any other exactly. blue horror is not going to be any less scary than any other blue horror. Exactly. And I think I think the, that if you're if you're, I think what it should do as far as when um if you're afraid of a pink, and then you're rolling against the blue, you should get, uh, the DN should be harder. You, if you're already afraid, it already of is. 
So, it is. It's plus yeah. two. It already is by being afraid. Right. Right. Yeah. Fear makes it plus two DN to target that thing. With any fear. Else. Yeah. Fear makes it so that the DN is harder against the source of that fear. So if I'm rolling against a new source of fear, the plus two would not apply. Yeah. Right. Me. But I think in this, well, what I'm yeah. saying is it should apply. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, I think yeah, we're on yeah, the yeah. same. Page. I, we were we were all on the same page. I forgot okay. that the rule doesn't say it that way. But you're right. right. <laughs> no, I, I think we're all on the same page yeah. here. We're, so. Okay. Yeah, we're, Let's see. So thematically, uh, Brother Harad and Sister Kranz, you guys are bastions of uh, strength and courage. Uh, but everybody else, you're a little bit shaken. You know, you saw what the pink horrors did to Jacta, and you just saw the fact that when Brother Harad cleaved one and two, they doubled in number. So maybe you're you're a little bit uh, doubting your abilities. Maybe uh, Torvian, for example, to pick on you for a little bit. Maybe you're you're freaking out, and you're sort of looking at all the generators going how the hell are we going to get to all these generators kind of a thing? But uh, unless anyone has any bits of free action they want to do, I believe it is time for the enemies to go. I would like to pinch a bit of glory just to uh, make a move. Um, can you do it? I already did that. Back. Ah, there's only once per... Yeah. 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 Okay, then... Uh... All right. So, Brother Harad, the blue horrors in front of you are going to act next, and I'll spend the ruins so that they do act back to back. Um, but they both sort of look at each other and begin cackling. That's not actually an ability that you would have. Your ability for spending ruin would make it so that you take you go first for the entire round. You wouldn't I'm have mixing it up no. with the, with the Star Trek. No. That's what I'm. No, doing. it is. No, it is actually the way that you're using it. It's it since initiative goes back and forth. Players can spend glory to go back to back, and the GM can spend the, ruin. The, to the have GM can spend enemies. ruin to to seize the initiative to go first, and he can for also the entire do, round. He doesn't actually have the the no, ability he can to spend double ruin. up. Yeah, he has the ability to spend ruin to seize initiative. You're correct, but he also can have enemies go back to back, just like we can go back to back. He can do both. Okay. And of course, you um, know, if if you find that, you know, I'm not supposed to, like, if you could find me a page number, I will totally believe you. Yeah, that's um, what I'm looking for really quick. It'll be on page 117 called Seize the Initiative. All right, let's take a quick look because this will... 77? 117. 117. 117. Seize the Initiative. I think the index is wrong. Yeah, the... Uh, 177. Yeah, it's 177. Um, interrupting Initiative can interrupt normal initiative by holding your action. Sorry about that. Feels bad. Uh, the no, the book fine. has it on the wrong page. PDFs and uh, PDFs and physical copy book pages are. No, you're right. The GM the may spend one ruin to seize the initiative for a threat the same way the players can. You're right. Okay, so I'm not crazy. That's good. All right, so you know, a little bit of confusion there, but again, you know, we uh, that's why we're taking it slowly and uh, making sure we're doing it correctly. Because it will matter in this fight. So, uh, as I was saying, the blue horrors begin cackling madly in front of you, Brother Harad. And they uh, sort of merge their uh, tentacles together. They're sort of gibbering masses. And between them, they form two balls of baleful, malefic blue fire that then is launched straight at you. So, uh, let me grab the blue horror sheet. I'm going to roll two attacks against you, and let me know if either of these hit. Well, that's a ruin. And that is a five. Do either of those hit? No. All right. So uh, what I would say is that the first one, uh, you know, let's give them dots, because I feel like we're going to get very confused very quickly if we don't dot these. So... We'll do green and purple. So the purple dot actually manages to send a bolt your way, but you maybe hold your shield up or maybe you literally move out of the way. Both and... of those are shield. Yeah, there you go. So it just splashes across your shield, no problem. Green dot's bolt, however, um, goes flying towards the direction of everybody else, but the warp fire just dissipates in the air before it even gets halfway to Corporal Shank, thanks to Soliloquy. Oh, Awesome. But yeah, it is now a uh, player's turn again. Awesome. Um, I think our agent wanted to plasma something. Oh, yes, I did. Uh, so the pink horror in the... Well, it's north of me. It's close to the north of me. Uh, I would like to plasma that. 
So um, this one? Yes, here? that one. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. Uh, so hopefully if I incinerate it, it won't double. Uh, so let's roll. Uh, Which orders are you from? Auto Hereticus. <laughs> That is uh, where it shoots damn good because I think that's a critical. <laughs> that is a critical. <laughs> that's that is uh, extremely impressive, and you can actually shift two of those nice. sixes. Remember, he has plus two DN because he's a feared. But oh, right, so he it. can only shift one of those sixes. Oh, um, and also, I guess you didn't mention it, but it, I assume there's no actual visibility DNs. No well? visibility DNs, correct? Or like ballistic mm. DNs? Nah, nah, okay. nah, nothing like that. Okay. Most of the wind up generous. here in the snow is for thematic effect. It's not actually to hinder you guys. Okay. I don't think it would hinder a plasma shot either way. If it True. Would uh, no, ballistics would get plus one DNs, I think. Yeah. Unless there's I something am. about plasma that doesn't care, which well, would make sense, too. Well, <laughs> well, given the amount of damage plasma does, I'm just going to shift that to our glory pool. All righty. for an extra dice. So, yeah, go uh, ahead and roll me some no, damage. I think, our, I think our pool's I think actually what? already full right now. So yeah. if you want to just, just throw it away for extra damage... It is. Oh, okay. Um, I'll roll an extra dice then. Uh, extra d6. I mean, technically, plasma has mass, so it should be affected by wind resistance. So, one so extra damage. 16. It's also super heavy. 16 AP minus 3. Nothing survives that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh, for, be giggles, <laughs> for giggles, go ahead and roll me a uh, critical hit because you did roll a critical hit, and I'm just curious to see what you'd get. Brutal rupture. All right, so that is literally what happens as the plasma <laughs> bolt. One, two, three wounds. Yeah, as the Frick. plasma bolt streaks across the open space and collides with the pink horror, um, you can see that it does make an attempt to begin splitting, but in the process, like there's just blood and uh, warp stuff that becomes cry crying, almost crying, uh, out of the creature's wounds as it literally is <laughs> evaporated mid air before it can basically split into two so that pink core no more well i'm gonna repeat the words of uh iconic kurt russell and go ha fuck you too <laughs> <laughs> um could i would like to spend a glory mm -hmm. for that um i want to spend a glory maybe it's even my own wrath um mm -hmm. i think that sort of shot would fill you with determination and maybe let you reroll your fear test you know what? I would allow it. Uh -oh. like a critical hit like that, you know what I mean? Like, hey, maybe we, there's a chance. No, maybe. I completely um, game with this. Maybe, but no. Nope. Not <laughs> okay. quite. Not Fair quite. Um, hey. No. <laughs> Listen, adrenaline lets you do crazy shit. Um, was that just a glory to, do, to try that? Yeah, just all, it would okay. be a one glory for that. Okay, cool. Do all you right. want to burn another glory and go next? I would like to burn a glory and go next, if that's all right with everybody. Yeah. Go for we, it. We have some. Yeah, I will um, go ahead and spend one. Cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move up, and uh, I I can do a rapid shot, right? Correct. I can shoot mul multiple targets. Mm -hmm. I just you believe it is that. a higher DN. Yeah, it's I think plus I'm... two to the DN for each additional target beyond on the first. Yeah. Well, and... I'm I'm shooting the both of the blue hor horrors, I think. So okay. you can burn a, a reload and reduce the difficulty number by your salvo reading. For multiple... yeah. But I'm not afraid, so I think the plus two is not going to be that significant. Uh, my ballistic skills are already sevens, so I think it's not going to be. I don't know, what yeah. do you all think? It, I'm just I, don't think, your I don't think you need to burn the ammunition. I think you'd probably hit those without uh, any. Yeah, without I, I, thank you. I, I, that's that, that. Okay, cool. My gut, my gut was right. So yeah. Uh, so so what it looks like the, is, huh? The only thing I would say is that shot that Shank took. He had mm -hmm. eight successes, and. He had the plus two because of his fear, mm -hmm. and he could only push one of his two sixes. Correct. So they have a defense of four. No, they have a defense of three. Of three. Okay. You still need to match it because mm -hmm. it takes the two out. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. Uh, so so it's one roll when I shoot multiple people, right? Just the DNs higher. I believe so. Yes. I roll damage mm -hmm. separately. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, cool. So then. Since I have to move to get into rapid fire range for the extra damage, I can't aim. Mm -hmm. um, so then I'm just going to be firing at seven dice. All right. Um, I want to probably I want to spend another point of glory to give me an additional die. Okay. Um, and I want to. I'm thinking if there's something I could do wrath wiser. 
anything else to give me an edge? Uh, I don't think so. Any, anyone, any quick, quick ideas? Y'all, anything? Mm. No. Invoke Not that I can think of. Get a quick blessing. I mean, oh yeah, I am. And obviously every time I shoot this bolter, I'm invoking the emperor's name. Um, but no, okay. I don't think, I don't think there's anything. Power? Or do you have to spend an action to use your faith? I mean, I, I'm, I'm enabling my wrath in case I have to reroll a failure. Okay. Um, if that's what I'm thinking of, mm -hmm. so let's do it. Okay. Uh, so sorry about that. I'm just that's looking fine. over all my options. I just want to make sure we're doing it right and have a good shot here. So one extra die. And eight successes. Eight successes. Uh, you can shift one of those sixes, and yeah, you hit both of these targets. Hell yeah. Okay. I will. I will shift one. I guess the first one for damage. And uh, that means I'm getting an additional uh, damage die. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just looking at the. Sorry, it's just been a little minute. It's been a minute here. So I'm brutal. I already have that adjusted. Mm -hmm. um, rapid fire two. So that's what I needed to know. So each of these will be getting two additional dice. Right? That's how rapid fire works. Actually, damage dice equal to the rapid fire rating. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So first attack. 11? Uh, 11 not not ideal uh second one 14 very nice 14. and actually uh even that 11 is just barely enough like literally one less damage it wouldn't have been enough um oh. so Kronz, you rapid fire with your bolter uh and you impact both of the blue horrors and as they sort of recoil from the shot of the explosive shell hitting them uh what happens is they begin to dissolve away but as they dissolve away, uh, what they leave behind them are two frozen apiece. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> this reminds me of uh, a D&D session that I ran where every enemy is split into two weaker enemies. That's literally why I picked this enemy, Inside. because I thought it was so fun. Inside the gelatinous cube was a mimic disguised as a chest. <laughs> Russian nesting demons. Yep. Oh lord. All right. So I think oh, uh, get the flamer, the heavy hey. flamer. <laughs> <laughs> so Kronz, you have heresy. Uh, no. Although, does that require another fear test of any no, kind for no, anybody? No, you're okay. Good. Yeah, because we've we've encountered these things before. Yeah, you seeing the frozen is old hat right. for you at this I'm, point. I'm sorry, Harad. I thought I was freeing you up. That's <laughs> cool. You freed me up to kill Frozen later. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So I'm looking at my options here. Um, I think <laughs> I'm going to say that this pink horror to the south uh, on the one that was going to throw or the one you were going to throw the grenade at. Um, this one's going to move just a little bit closer. And it is going to take a shot at Sister Kronz. So let me find what I did with their sheet. How do you feel about a five? Uh, my sheet says my defense value is one, which. Yeah, that's um, that's entirely possible. It is possible, but it would be very low. Even though I'm wearing power armor. armor well, that would be resilience and resilience. armor. Not yeah. Even. Oh, defense yeah, resilience is initiative, I believe. I think your defense is your initiative. Minus one. Minus one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nope, that's right then. Okay. okay. <laughs> so there is a combat complication, which is weird, but let me ask you guys this. Because they are using a warp-based attack, would you rather me come up with something fun on the fly, or would you like them to roll on the perils table? Uh, I'd just... like to say something co come up on the fly, because it's technically a demon, so it wouldn't have to perils. Very good. And All I right. could also foresee the, the whole perils of the warp. It's going to summon more demons. Yeah. Yeah, but they be might be a third party to this yeah. conflict. <laughs> you know, but it would be are, more demons. <laughs> Some, these are all excellent <laughs> points. Summons a blood letter. And you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> well, yeah, let's go to the other generator. <laughs> well, you know what? Now that, you know, I think that's a fun idea. So I'm going to roll. I'll roll 2d6. Yeah. Wait, are they psychers? Um, they are technically worth, psychers, yes. It's because... Okay. Because the reason I'm the one asking being is, attacked. does it mean they can empower their abilities and just get all of the wrath dice? Oh yeah, they could. I'm being very nice right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love it if they did uh, perils. 
All right, so 22 on the perils chart. Uh, let's see what that ends up being. Let's see. Page... Anything about rolling even? Same Page number. 262. Uh, no, the way it works is you roll 2d6, and it's whatever you come up. All right, so... Oh, oh interesting. All right, so we'll deal with damage in a moment, but... Everybody within 25 meters, so I guess I need to actually put an aura on this thing. That's going to uh, be everybody. Yeah, I was sure the third everyone. person. Yeah. All right, so everybody in that red aura, what happens is all the lights Matt. around you begin to <laughs> dim, and the shadows begin to creep up on you like they're living shadows, and you all hear these sinister whispers in your ears, and I need everybody including Sister Kranz, to roll a DN3 corruption test. And if you fail this corruption roll, you are vulnerable to for one round. Good lord. No, so because a it's a corruption, corruption test, if we fail, we also get the corruption, don't we? Correct. So oh. is, is this resist corruption or conviction again? Uh, it should be resist corruption. Yeah. No, I will not eat your chicken nuggets. So there's three successes. Now for my failure. My resist corruption is the same. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Torvian, Wait, why you... did it not roll any dice? Yeah, I was, that's what I was going to ask. That's... Why are you? Yeah, you did not roll any dice. I rolled a resist corruption check. It literally didn't give me any dice. Do you, do you, you have, have a number in you your resist no corruption? <laughs> I, love I have it. three resist corruption. Well, go okay. ahead and roll well, that's three. Just weird. Just, yeah, just roll somewhere else then. Uh, it's the conviction test. Hello. Ooh, complication. <laughs> like Satori's, I said, that failure. That doubles the corruption, right? I think so. So, yeah, Tori, you're going to take four. You're going to take two corruption, and you are vulnerable two for one round. If you were a darkest um, dungeon character and this was the run, I'm letting you go at the end of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm bothering. <laughs> All right. So that's what happens Hashtag as. Calls it? Well, <laughs> that's what happens as the warp fire flies at you, Kratz. Now, the warp fire is yeah, actually going to damage hit you though. now. Yep. So this is going to do only nine damage, but you are within Salili's uh, area of effect, which is good. Because that nine gets reduced down to a four. Yeah, and that does not go through my resilience. Alrighty. So the oh, warp yeah. fire just sort of splashes across your power armor and you yep. feel empowered. Yeah, exactly. It fills in with determination. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Love to see it. All right. So that is uh the pink horror's turn. Uh going back Wait, to the my shield. Uh, tell you what, let me ask this. Uh, let's have, uh, Shank, would you be okay with controlling Salili? Uh, yeah, I would, actually. Uh, right. But I don't have a character sheet, so... I'll let um, you know, uh, what you need to roll, but... Uh, actually, let me check. Did I think ahead and do her sheet properly? Uh, no, I did not do her sheet properly. Uh, she uses the same stats as a... Find it real quick... It is page 334. Uh, she uses the same stats as a scum. And I'm just oh, going to okay. give you guys all access to her sheet. So you should now be able to move her token about the cabin. Mm, I don't have... No, I think you have to give the token permissions. Uh, if you... Let's see. It should be... Or maybe I just have to refresh or whatever. One second. If you just click on her in the list of sheets, it'll pull it up. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it now. Oh, yeah. No, I can see the sheet, but I can't move the token, which is, I think the token's set to, mm -hmm. I just have probably have to just refresh. No, the tokens have their own uh, uh, owners. Oh, I thought Eli Admittedly said. Admittedly speaking, the okay. character sheet I'm looking at has ones yeah, for all that's... of her stats and zeros for all of her skills. Right, which means I didn't put it in properly. That's fine. Yeah, I'm trying, to move, I'm trying to move to Lily, but I can't. All right, let me refresh uh, what she actually represents. 
because I, I mean, think we can do that. The thing. We can fill it in. If, if you said that she's just a scum, then we can we can just fill that in for you. Well, I meant no for worries. the token because it's apparently. Oh. All you gotta do is uh, right click on it. There we go. Or, can you uh, control her setting? now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Okay. All right. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna let you guys control Salili because I think that's more fun than me uh, metagaming my own plan. Right, so given my control, I'm going to move uh, right about here. Okay. Up with me. Uh, just to maximize error and facts. Mm -hmm. and... Is that the furthest she can move? No, it's not the furthest she can move. Put her um... one square, one meter further forward so that she's disrupting all four of those. Because remember, whenever, she, whenever the frozen, which those are, are in range of her aura, they start losing control of themselves. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Um. Yep. Yeah, okay. She's moved over there. And I mean, that's like ten meters. It has to be like our whole turn. Mm -hmm. Uh, human movement yeah. is six, so that's a. Uh, well, it's still more. Yeah. Run. It's, yeah. It's so we run. could you could theoretically move more, but that was that is your two actions, right? Well, okay. In uh, in game, you can then... just say Agent Shank just orders us to run. Unless you want to put her right run. there. That way, this pink horror here is also in range. Oh, oh! If I you put her that. right here, it's the same distance from where yeah. she started. Yep. Okay. But that way, all of them. So yeah. Yep. I think that would be the better move. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that, and I'll enter turn that way because that's considered a run. Okay. And if anyone else wants to steal the initiative round about now, they can do. Um, well, I think everybody's gone. Everybody, all of us have taken our turns. All that's left are the horrors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's going to happen now as Lily runs up is we're going to deal with the Frozen first. So, I'm going to ma be making a uh, DN3 test for each of the Frozen. And I'm just going to roll in rapid succession here. Uh, that one succeeds. That one fails. That one fails. And that one succeeds. So, Brother Harad, as Salili rushes forward and her aura sort of envelops you again, your stomach kind of upturns a little bit. But you also notice that two of the frozen nearby you are not dissolving, but are more or less collapsing on the spot. And two of the frozen have been eliminated in such a way, but the other two frozen are standing strong. So let's deal with the frozen first. Uh, those two frozen are going to go for you, Brother Harat, because you're, you know, right there and they're not exactly bright. So uh, does A5 hit you? It does not. Okay. How would you feel about... A two's not going to hit you either. <laughs> feel better right. about well, that, what actually. What about a two? <laughs> so, you know, uh... you, you drive a hard bargain, that one hits me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I awesome. love it. So but is yeah. this just like them uh, unable to get through your shield? I think yeah, so. So the yeah. shield effect adds its uh, armor rating to defense and resilience. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. So they just they just get hit by shield. Basically. Okay. Uh, yeah, awesome. All right. So now I have the arduous task of making sure I do each of these horrors correctly. So uh, looking at the horror sheet, uh, they can go a total of. Let's see. Uh, does the pink horror in the aura uh, try and unmanifest? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, let me do that in a moment, though. Uh, let's see. So their speed is six. All right. So this pink horror is going to move to here and is going to take a shot at... And this is kind of difficult because it's such a large map. I'll zoom out a little bit so the stream can see what's going on. Uh, let's see. So I think you guys are within range. 11, 13, 15. Uh, yeah, Shank, you're outside of that aura and you're within range. But it does have to pass through the aura, so that's still going to be It does reduce. have to pass through it, yeah. So it is going to still take a shot at you uh, with its pink warp fire. Fair enough. And how would you feel about a 7? That hits. All that right. definitely hits. So I'm going to shift that six for an additional um, bit of damage. Real quick. I'm sorry. Sorry, real quick. Range increments on that? Uh, range on that is actually 24. Is that yeah. max range? 
No, it's it's medium range. Uh, its max range oh, is thirty six. Okay. Plus, oh, uh, that's not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Eric? No, that that was I was kind of similar thing, but the range. But okay. Ben Ben's already on it. Gotcha. All right. So let's uh, see what this damage is. So it will be doing uh, only four damage as it uh, passes through Salili's aura, and you can see the warp fire diminish as it gets up to you proper. Does that even do any damage to you? Nope. All right, so like with Sister Krantz, the weakened warp fire just sort of ineffectually blasts across your form, but you feel fine. And then, Oh, I'll live to suffer another day. And then, since you reminded me, the pink horror in Salili's aura is going to immediately take two mortal wounds for being within her aura. All right, and now the other pink horrors. So you can move six. Let's move you there. Don't quite have a shot on you, so it's actually going to run and get to about there, but that's its entire turn. Uh, this pink horror here is, believe it or not, is going to be able to get to here. And I would say has a shot. Nah, generator's in the way. I'm going to say the pink horror is going to shoot at Salili. So let's see how well it does. That would be like the closest one. Oof. Yeah, so I believe I can shift those two sixes for two additional damage. Yep. Uh, which means 11 divided by two rounded down, which would be five. I think that hurts Salili a little bit. What's her resilience? Because my resilience Probably. is a seven. I'm imagining she's at least fairly close to that. As I scroll back up and, you know, I'll just make another window. So many windows. Uh, her resilience is only a four. So oh. she takes one point. She takes one wound, actually. Oh, and she as she uh, as she's sort of smarting and trying to pat out the warp fire that's caught her uh, armor on fire, not like actual fire, but for thematic effect, um, the other pink horror is going to move up to here. And I think she's in range. Yeah, she's in range. Nope. Uh... Oh, no, the generator's in the way. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Is anybody within range? Torvin is within long range. Uh... Oh, you know what? I think I know exactly what this is going to do. So those of you that are paying attention to that side of the generator, you see one of the pink core charging up a warp fire and it unleashes it, but it doesn't fly towards one of you. It in fact flies instead towards this pink core here. And what that means is as the warp fire impacts the pink core, um, its form begins to mutate and grow in size. And this is a homebrew thing, if you're curious where this is coming from. But the pink horror doubles in size and also doubles in wounds as it mutates further. And I Which do pink horror was that? Uh, it's the now big pink horror you can see. Yeah. And what I'm going to say is that's going to cost me one ruin to activate each time. Um, but it is something I can do with ruin. Is it something that you can do multiple times on the same one? Yes. One ruin each. So, so you can could get very dangerous for, very quickly. For two ruin. Uh, I'm trying to think. Did I get all the pink horrors? It looks like I... Oh, nope. Here's one down one here. Uh, it's going to move to there. And check ranges. I think Salili is... Yes, yeah, Salili is in short range. So Salili's getting another... Another bit of warp fire thrown at her. Um, yeah. Oh God, Lily. So Lily might go down. Yeah. So she's actually on fire. Like mm -hmm. with that crit, she is actually on fire, but she also. Oh boy. Yeah. So Lily's down. Yeah, I think unfortunately, like, because if I shift all of those, I think she's dead. But I'll still roll it for thematic effect. Can she not move, uh, roll shock? Uh, she cannot because she is not a quote unquote main character. Eight. So I think what happens here is Salili, if I read this correctly, oh. 
Could we spend glory on her behalf so she can spend roll shock? I will allow it, yes. Well, what's her How what's her shock? stat for what's her determination? Uh, uh her determination is looking at the scum stat block. Yeah, like would that save her or not? Um her determination or her conviction is a two, her resolve is a one. Yeah, I don't think she's living through this, unfortunately. Yeah, so yep. there's no okay. point in uh, spending the glory. Yeah, exactly. All right, so unfortunately, what happens is uh, Salili, like, obviously the first bolt hits her, and she frantically tries to pat it out. And then the second one impacts the same way, and this time, even with the diminishing effect, she emolates on the spot and turns into a flaming husk. Uh, turns into a flaming husk, sort of flailing about. And just like with Jackta, she wanders over the edge and goes plummeting. Oh, there goes our protection. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bye bye, Salili. But uh, hey, good news. Uh, it's now a new round. So, player's turn to act. All right, <laughs> Torvin, we need to get to one of these generators. I'm acting at minus four for this turn. Do you mind you if I start the round? Y'all do what you, whatever y'all yeah, want to do. do. There's not much I can do right now. Okay. You all, you <clears> might be just running to our generator. Yeah, uh, the one I would be heading towards. The, the issue is this one down here, which I might be able to get to, is covered by one, two, three, three regulars and a huge one. And the one up north has two regulars that would be targeting me because I'd be the one going towards the sensitive point. Well, I'm assuming they're here to guard these. True. Um, but that's why you have me to help you. Um, whichever yeah. way you go, I'm, I'll be, I'm going to be tanking for whatever I can for, <laughs> with my defense value of one, mm -hmm. but I will be doing whatever I can to, uh, to help you out. I'm okay. going to be heading up to that one because that's the safer bet. Uh, you said now. that one, but I don't, I don't, I didn't the, see you already pinged. Y'all can't see the ping. Or the one that's no, above I, and close. Gotcha. Yeah. Directly. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So everyone doesn't mind if I take, uh, if I take top. Go for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack both of the uh, uh, frozen in front of me with a multi-attack. Okay. Just making sure. Yep. Uh, okay. Could you uh, get us some glory, please? I can try. <laughs> you could do while that. You're, while you're great. slicing and dicing. That'd be perfect. That'd be great. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, you can shift that six if you so wish. I absolutely will for some glory. Okay, so I hit both of them, so then we'll do damage um, uh, left to right. Actually, I think even with your base damage, you kill them, but go ahead and roll it. Just Yeah, even with your base damage because of that AP. So this time when you run these frozen through, nothing else spawns. Like the frozen just fall to the ground in pieces. Nothing else happens. They are dormant on the floor. Well, not dormant, uh, dead, I should say. All right, and then I'll use the rest of my turn to move. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go there. All righty. So, uh, do you wish to spend glory for someone else to act right now? That would probably be wise. I'll, yeah. I'll, I can act. Okay. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so um, I'm going to move. So these crates near... Well, nearish crowns. Uh, does that count as cover? That would, yes. I will move there. That's about four, yeah, four meters. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be possible for me to re-roll my uh, resolves to remove there? Or would that stay? I'm of two minds here, and I want to mm. I want to sort of solicit feedback here. So I think at this point, you know, there is re there is cause for you to re-roll your fear. But at the same time, you did just see your blank go up in warp fire. That is true. That is very true. Uh, so I think I'll leave it then, uh, okay. just I for think... thematic uh, reasons. Um, my my think of fairness here would be, it would be a minor action. It would mm -hmm. still cost you a minor action, so you couldn't move and do an action to do it. All right. I tell you what, or, if you... and even then, it if, all, if... maybe also it requires a glory. I like, I don't know. I'm I'm open to it, but it would come at a cost for sure. Mm -hmm. Per the rules, the only way to get rid of it is um, it goes away at the end of the scene, 
Or mm-hmm. once an ally makes a leadership of two plus the, the fear value. Oh. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that is... There, is, there is a res- resolution mechanic. Oh, yeah, let me do that. Okay. Yeah, but so that's definitely in, a but it looks thing. like once, once one of our allies passes a leadership, all of us lose that fear effect. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. Okay, I didn't know that. Awesome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on page 199, if anybody's curious. Yeah. Um, if it's... Okay. Uh, it's DN2 plus the fear value, and it's your leadership of will. Yeah. Uh, would it be okay if maybe I went instead and did that, now that we know how that operates? Like, yep. order of operations? Go for it. So right. you don't have that? Awesome. And, uh, yeah, so... Um, I mean, this makes sense because our friend just died, right? And uh, yeah, I, I like I would have that sort of like inspiring speech of like I was next to them and I'm not moving anywhere, and I'm gonna do that thing where you're like you know again like you are hereby forbidden to die before finishing this mission, and uh, I'm gonna roll a leadership and I'm gonna spend a glory to give myself a plus one to it. We don't have enough glory. We're you know, we have two. We're gonna need this glory to take as many uh, turns next back to back as possible. Got it. Okay. Never mind then. All right. So then let's just do and it. I think that you use the glory for the added dice before well, we came to glory. <laughs> well, you do get a glory, and uh, is that I believe that is enough successes if I read that correctly. Um, the fear is it was a rank. It was a two fear, right? It was a three yeah. fear. Three fear. So you it's need a leadership end, of five. It's two plus. The fear. Oh, so. plus okay. what it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then I'll spend a wrath to reroll my failures as well. Okay. That's there enough. we go. That's everybody's enough. fear free. Yay! Yep. Uh, so all of you, uh, all of you feel <laughs> a little bit of fire in your soul as uh, Kronz's sort of conviction sort of steals you towards the horrors you are facing. But yeah, that is your uh, normal action there, Kronz. Uh, do you want to move? Do you want to? A ca- yeah, uh, yeah. A coward's life is never lived, and a hero's life never dies. As a uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I, uh, that was that my full action, and then I have a minor action to move, right? So I'm gonna I move forward. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, so let me count it because I can only move six. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna start moving forward. Uh, the idea here is I'm gonna be in a position to help whoever runs past me to one of the generators or whatnot. So, gotcha. Okay. Cool. Turnover. All right, turnover, which means it now has to pass to the enemies at least once. Mm -hmm. And I think what's going to happen is the pink horror is going to go mano a mano with Brother Harad. So Brother Harad, this gibbering pink mask comes running up to you. Well, maybe not running so much as floating or skirting across the surface. And it is going to literally hit you with its uh, corrupting tendrils. So... Uh, this is going to be, do, 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 do. uh, it's going to say I'm rolling for flames, but the roll is the same for them. All right. So does a six hit you? The six matches it. Okay. I believe it is meet or beat if I remember correctly. So that will hit you. Uh, let's see. So, uh, this does six plus two ED. So let's see. Two ED means... Uh, you would only take six damage as this tears into you, which I think doesn't even get through your resilience and armor. I don't think it does. Nope. All right. Uh, so, oh, go ahead. Is that still always do one shock? Is that how that works? Um, if it would it does meet... a shock if, if if the damage meets the resilience. Correct. That's what it is. Okay. Thank yeah, you. With That's a tie, the, there is a minimum. Da- okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, so Harad, maybe you bring up your shield just in time to block its claws as it tries to tear at you with its warpish sort of tendrils, but you you fend it off and are able to uh, get it otherwise away from you. Um, I'm going to save that one rune for something else, so Shank or Torvian, if you guys want to go. I'll go. So I'll go with my original plan, moving into cover. Okay. Uh, and because I have no... Well, because I'm no longer under the effects of fear, I will take a multi-action. Okay. Get him, Shank. Get him. To hit the pink horror closest to me and the one just south of the giant pink horror that's locked in combat with the Harad. 
And gotcha. that's the part where you roll a ruin and uh, kill yourself. <laughs> so, <laughs> based ah, on our luck, but <laughs> not overcharging. I'm not, I'm not overcharging, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, that's uh, true. That's true. Yeah. Thank goodness. So, is it just one roll to hit both of them? One roll to hit both, and then two separate damages. Okay. Yeah. And a six will hit them. Okay. And uh, two damages. So, what's the range on the plasma pistol? Eighteen. That's its max. Just... Um, isn't there something about like shooting okay. further than half? There, there's a problem, or is that just the uh, rapid fire rules for? Am I, am I, am I missing? It's something? a um, my it's a plus one dn to hit if they're at the long range. If they're within short range, it's plus one. To, it's plus two to the damage. I think. No, it's plus one uh, modifier. Uh, uh, I just I just looked at it. It's plus one to your attack if they're within short range, and if they are more than medium range, that's plus two dn. Not oh. even with that it's six. It's plus two to their defense. Okay, so the six still doesn't matter. Okay, got Yeah, it. even with the six, he'll he'll hit both. Perfect. All right. So, uh, Shank, you sort of level your plasma pistol, line up a shot on both of these, and yeah, you put both pink cores down. Like, same sort of thing. Your plasma tears them apart molecularly before they can mutate and spawn further horrors. So those two horrors are no more. And stuff. given that, I will end my turn. All right. So, uh, Torbin, you want to spend glory, or is it the enemy's turn again? It's the enemy's turn. Right now, I'm in a good position to not be killed. Well, <laughs> that's what right. you think. <laughs> I've got all of y'all between me and them. <laughs> all right. So this pink horror is going to float on over to here. And... Uh, I'm going to check ranges here. Are shooting past Shank, but... You know what? I think they would go for Shank. Like, I think that, that at this point, oh, the yeah. cores know that you're the big threat here. He has taken out three of them now. Yeah, so I think the pink core is going to go for you. All right. That's completely Brother Haran yes. killed one. Right, he so... did kill just about everything else that came out of that one, so... How would you feel about a four there, Shank? <laughs> A four. That is a meet my resilience. So meet yeah, your resilience. You All right. Yeah. So um, is that damage. resilience, or is that your defense? Uh, so my resilience is four. And that's not my complete. Oh, sorry. My defense, defense is four. That's not my complete resilience. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so what is the total damage on that? Uh, total damage is going to be eleven. So my resilience is nine. Mm -hmm. So I'll be two damage, but I'm going to try and soak that. Okay. Uh, so ooh, where's the soap button gone? Now, the one thing I would say is that even if you are able to soak this, um, the same thing that happened to Salili is going to happen to you in that because you have been impacted by this warp fire, you are mm. now counted as being on fire. fire. Yes, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to roll the shock. That's your determination. Oh, okay. Uh, which is counted as conviction? On this sheet, I believe so. Yeah, I'll roll it at a minus two because I'm only at two shock anyway. Because I don't think we recovered any. No, I don't think so. Not yet, no. No. Oh, there we go. That's because I keep forgetting about something on my turn. All right, so you are able to soak one of those, but uh, yeah, you still take at least one wound, and you are lit on fire as this okay. pinkish hellfire washes over you. Just as a reminder, you can spend a combat action and one wrath to restore shock on your turn. Okay. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, yeah, we we'll need you to, to shoot uh, these things. I'm going to scream in a uh, free action, uh, Medic. <laughs> yeah very very apt all right uh torman i believe it is your turn so i'm going to take a simple action mm -hmm. because i am wounded and activate my gallows humor and i'm gonna say don't worry guys so far we've taken out more of them than they've taken out of us so i get to roll a fellowship and we get a all of us restore shock equals the number of icons i roll Fellowship. Everybody gets two shock back. 
Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Given I'm about to pass out, so don't worry. When you're at when you're at uh, zero shock, you're only exhausted. Yeah, it's just exhaustion. Don't worry about it. And then I still can make a uh, move action, right? You can. So let's see. Yeah. I'm just going to duck into these boxes right next to Corporal Shank, which should give me cover to those two pink horrors. Yeah. Yeah. That it does. That it right. does. So right. a simple action, move action, that should be everything, right? I believe so. All right. So uh, by my count, I have two pink horrors that have yet to act. Uh, this one up here. Gonna move six, and I'm gonna spend my last ruin to activate the effect that it hits its fellow. That one gets bigger. All right. And then the other pink horror down here to the south uh, is actually going to move back towards the generator. All right, and it is an entirely new round, which means players which of you would like to act? I'm okay not going first this time. Um, I'm going to move up here by Sister Krantz and do a quick med check to see if I can restore her any wounds. Okay. Okay. Um, I was thinking making sure Shank could fire everything. <laughs> yeah, I will again that point out too. that Shank is literally on fire. Yeah. What yeah. can I do to... The medic ran past the burning man. <laughs> yeah, to be like, help think... me! Is there anything... <laughs> Your bruises, milady. I think, I think you could just spend a combat action and put him out. Yeah. Fabian, it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> it's just fire, dude. Don't worry about it. You look well, a little hot kind of under the collar. On fire, right? yo. Yeah. yeah, it, It's snowing. You'll be fine. I would like to point out, I did take two grenades in the last episode. <laughs> um... So yeah, Torvian, are you actually going to spend your combat action to put Shank out? Um, am, am I able to do that with On Fire? Um, it technically, it says you're supposed to roll agility, but if you're spending your your combat action to do it, I would allow it. I think yeah, that's it's not fair. something roll. that an ally can do. It's something that you have to do yourself. I mean, it, it's one of those things where, you know, I imagine you come over and maybe, like, help him pat out the fire and help okay. him, like, stop, drop, and roll. Fine. You've got, you've got cold weather gear. Fine. has, like, a cloak. You can beat him with it. Get yeah, some aggression out on him, too. Uh, my cold weather gear is under my armor, so it doesn't get damaged when I get injured. So you can just beat him with your arms like this. So I'm going to jump on top of him and roll around on the ground with him, covering him in it. snow, and uh, hopefully dousing the fires. All right. So, I I will let it happen. Shank, you are no longer on fire, but you now have Torvian on top of you. So infer what you will. You're a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor We're not helps say that those to help themselves. And then I'm gonna <laughs> hop off and sneak, st stay in cover. I guess. Um, okay. so that's my range here. I'm gonna take a pop shot with my shotgun at the big dude. Okay. Uh, shotgun. Good call. Not really. It's it's got terrible range. Like he's at my me medium range right now. <laughs> well, it's doing damage. We're gonna forgot, the other one is at my long range, so and it's right next to me. Three is exactly <laughs> what you need. <laughs> hey, buddy. All right. <laughs> so. Uh, your shotgun shells sort of bury themselves into the gibbering pink mass, uh, doing some damage, but it doesn't seem to really care, all things considered. You look like something that I shot out this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and now we should probably spend the glory to have someone else do something. Yeah. I'm okay oh. waiting. Like, I'm okay tanking a hit or two from this thing. Right. I could burn another two if you want. I can try. I would love, yeah, I would love it if you would go and either blow up this immediate big boy or the small one. 
Right. Okay. I'm going to move. We're both big boys, even. So I'm going to move next to Sister Krantz, which is five meters, which is just about my movement range. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will bring me in range of, yep, both of those horrors to the north. Uh, so I've got 10 meters. And we'll take a multi action to try and hit both. All right. I believe. I believe too. I've got that terrible song oh. Mirror Mirror stuck in my head. Thanks. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, three is enough. Do you want to wrath that? I would like to wrath it. So I'll just click the reroll button. That is a significant change, yes. And yes. Uh, uh, probably I believe push can, one of those. Yeah, you can push yeah. one of those. I would like to push one of those to the glory pool, uh, not to extra damage. Okay. And I'll just roll damage to both. All right, so what I would say is your first shot hits the big one, and the big one uh, literally looks at the new hole in its chest that is spreading outwards, and it tries to paradoxically try to claw its chest open further to try and split itself. But again, you've done this trick two times already. Third time's the charm, as they say. And even with its added mass and ability, that pink horror is no longer... And your second shot does, again, same sort of thing, where the pink horror is unable to manifest in, into two blue horrors uh, before it is too late. So you've uh, you've done quite a bit of damage here, Shank. Yeah, um, with that, I'll end the turn. Well, end my turn. Alrighty. So now I only have two pink horrors left on the board, and I think what the pink horror is going to try to do, Brother Harad, is it is trying to grapple you in an attempt to jump off into the abyss with you. Oh, God. So let me make sure I'm doing grappling right. Uh, let's see. It is an action, a opposed strength. All right. And it has a three strength. All right. So I need a strength from roll from you, Brother Harad. A two and a ruin. Interesting. Well, uh, where is that button? There it is. Hopefully it rolls worse. Otherwise, <clears throat> it oh, good. rolled worse. Wow. All right. Well, the I'm emperor kind of the... protects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it uh it does try to sort of grapple onto you and pull you forward, but you sort of hold your ground and steel yourself against its attack. And, uh, yeah, you basically go nowhere as this thing tries to pull you over the edge. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be my go. So, Harad or Kranz, uh, you're up next. Um, I'll go because I have yeah. an actual threat. <laughs> um, I'm trying to look in the rules to see if I can multi-attack, if I can do two sword attacks on one creature. I don't you can do an all-out attack. Okay, where is no. that? Which re re reduces your defense, but increases your damage. Or... Yeah, you would gain plus two damage to melee attacks. Hmm, plus two extra damage dice or damage itself? Uh, damage dice. No, it's um, it's two dice on the attack, not on damage. Sorry. Multi-attack. Every target by plus two, it's the same weapon. Multi attack has to work, I think, against multiple targets. Aren't you technically grappled right now? No, no he, he, uh... he passed it. No, well, he passed it, but there was a complication. So wouldn't he still be grappled, just not falling over the edge? Right, the complication. Um trying to think well, of something win. fair here but also thematic yeah so it didn't it didn't win the grapple right but there's still a complication from you so i feel like think... you're not so you're not restrained right you're not restrained uh how would you feel about this brother harad maybe that the complication is that in trying to oppose this grapple maybe you lose the shield that you made and it goes flying over the edge yeah it sounds about right okay then oh, that's yeah. what we'll roll with um, a sick image. Uh, hmm. 
Okay, so bear with me here. I'm mm -hmm. reading multi-attack, and it says every additional attack increases the defense of every target by plus two for the purpose of the multi-attack. Each attack of the multi-attack must use the same weapon, and you cannot shift as part of a multi-attack. Mm -hmm. um, roll damage once and apply the result to every target. Does that mean that I can do a multi-attack where I target the, that? Multi-attack is all can only be used against multiple targets. Except it doesn't say that. Wait, hold on. Their own weapons can use jump discretion. If a multi-attack with a melee weapon, you must move into engagement with all targets. You cannot reach target and are hit by the multi-attack. Um, it says that it works the same as multi-actions. See. Multi action. Yeah, multi action is plus two DN for each uh, additional action. And you cannot attack twice as a multi action. So all out attack is your best option. Yeah, I would okay. say all damage. I knew all somewhere out. it told me I couldn't do this. I just didn't remember where. You can't take yeah, a multi action if you all out attack. They had the multi attack, and then they had one where you could attack the same target multiple times. But I think that was the old version. I don't think you can do that in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you can't um, make a multi-action action. Wait. Hold on. You can attempt more than one combat action in a round, but doing so makes all combat actions you take more difficult. You can't take more than one attack action by using a multi-action. Right. So I can't attack twice. Mm. So yeah, I guess... Uh, you could like intimidate an attack, like for lowering the defense, and then yeah, you could definitely you could do that. No, it causes fear. It's uh, immune to intimidation attacks. No, right? Is it, uh, uh, yeah, it's immune to all interaction attacks. That's right. Well, I guess I will stick with the pointy end. Yeah. Then again, your defense has already been reduced because you lost your shield. Yeah, I don't really want to... Two dice to the attack, not to the damage. But you know what? My defense is probably such that I'm going to get hit anyway, so may as well. Unless we can break it down. How the hell do we know how to attack? Uh, plus two bonus dice to your melee di dice. Yeah, my yeah it's, just, it's, to the, it's plus two to the to hit dice. Or plus two dice for it to hit, but not to damage. Um, okay, so you know what? I'm not going to do an all-out attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ethan Strength, you've already gone today, right? You've already gone this yeah. round? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've already gone this round. So. Okay. I can't burn anymore. Wow. Uh, you can That's shift good three of those. Uh, you know what? I'll shift three of those. And I'm going to shift them all to extra damage. Okay. Ooh. All right. And that is more than enough that uh, as you slice this thing apart, uh, you probably already know what's coming, but uh, two blue horrors of the same size uh, appear in its spot. Oh. Don't blue warmers normally half the size? Uh, normally, yes, but uh, remember, they were juiced up. Yeah, also, because gym. there is no 1.5 size. Well, I guess there could be if I were to hold alt. So maybe it's maybe it's actually like that big. Whatever. So it's two blue horrors that are the size of normal pink horrors. More or less. More or less. Okay. But yeah, uh, anything else you'd like to do, Brother Harad? Um, that was a full round action. Or no, mm -hmm. um, I have a not combat action. What are not combat actions that I could even do? You could disengage. That could reload, could uh, ready a weapon. Hmm. Um... No, I think no, that is an attack option, my bad. I think there isn't really much I can do. Okay. So, yeah. Prance, you want to spend glory to go next, or is it time for the horrors to go? 
you know, I think it's time for the horrors to go. I don't think spending this glory was, so, I'm not going to bring one down. That's, that's yeah. actually another question. Those two blue horrors, since the mm-hmm. horror that they were created from has already taken its turn, do they get a turn? I um, I would say for thematic sake, they will, because otherwise this is an easy mop up for you guys. Um, so for thematic sake, yes, they will each get a turn. But yeah, uh, I'm blue cool with horror. That. Yeah, the blue horror is actually this one here. And let me give them dots again. So purple and green. Uh, purple is going to try another strength against you. It's going to try to literally barrel rush you over the edge. So another strength opposed, please. Woohoo. That's much better. Yeah, I nice. I think I'd have to roll all sixes for this to work. Yeah. So it wastes its turn just slamming Spend. against you, and you just again, you're a pillar of strength. You go nowhere. And now it is uh Sister Kronz's turn. Okay. I was wondering if there was a way you could like spend wrath to like clash with this thing. Where you could like as it tries to barrel roll like or uh bull rush you off that it that <laughs> it bull rushes itself off the, the edge. I, I don't think thought I don't about, see that happen. I thought about doing that and then realized that Brother Harad would not want one of these creatures anywhere near or anywhere outside of his uh concrete knowledge that they are dead. Mm-hmm. There. Yeah, they don't get to fall down the, the pit and or off the tower. Um, my brain just jumped to the Death Star. I almost, <laughs> almost um, threw the, the big one off and I went, nah, I want it dead. Good stuff. Um, you know, uh, let me ask are we all Wrath? Has everybody tapped up with Wrath? I've only got uh, one. I've only got uh, How many did you get per game? Per Two. Session? Two. Oh, I've only got one left. Yeah, okay. we all have one left except you, I guess. Oh yeah. Well, I would like to do a power. Okay. Um, or at least I should say I would like to spend some of my faith to do it to to do righteous wrath. Okay. Um, which I say a litany, and as I say it out, um, I am it's a combat action to do this. Um, but I will spend one of I will spend a faith um to gain two wrath. And by doing this, I can bestow uh, any Imperium ally with a wrath. I believe I should probably give it to Brother Harad. Okay. Um, for for bisecting the, that great thing. Um, I wish I could give two of them away. I feel angrier. <laughs> yeah. My anger is rising. Um, can I do a multi-action? Like, can I do multiple combat actions that way? Yes. Like I could do that, and That's then actually, what multi-action is for? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Uh, oh yeah, I'm I'm within range here. I'm not gonna multi-attack and hit both of them, but I'm gonna shoot for the purple horror here. Okay. Um, shooting the purple here horror within range attack roll. And I ideal. believe with multi-action that actually misses because your DM well, would be a five. I, I will spend a wrath to re-roll that. All right. You the wrath that to... I just got for <laughs> yeah, yeah. my litany. Ooh, interesting. Oh. Um, not S- ideal. <laughs> so we're going to roll a combat complication. <laughs> yeah, so Kratz, we'll flavor it this All way. Right. You go to fire and you, you depress the right? trigger. I already did re-roll. re-roll. Yeah, that you don't. Re-roll. when you re-roll, you don't get the wrath die. Why is it re-rolling the wrath die then? That's a good point. Because um... I noticed it doing that earlier and I thought that was by design. Hmm. All right, so maybe there isn't a combat complication. So there's no complication. It's just that I, I mean, I think it's one of those things where I just like shoot it and it's not. It doesn't it doesn't get hurt. It's not that I miss. It's just that it doesn't. It just like eats it. You know. Yeah, it just eats the shell, and there's no satisfying explosion that accompanies it. Unfortunately. No. All right. God, I literally re-rolled for no additional successes. Oh, okay. Ooh. Anything else, Kratz? No, I uh, take a free action to be sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think what the blue horror is going to do is it's going to basically do an interaction attack against Brother Harad. And uh, Brother Harad, this interaction attack is going to be versus your agility. Oh. Okay. So, so I, I found what it is. Go ahead. So 
After you've rolled your dice pool for a test, you can spend a wrath point to reroll every one, two, and three in the results, potentially earning more icons. You can only do this once per test, and you cannot reroll a wrath die that rolled a complication. Ah, so there is a oh, complication so it is, on the So field. there's a cup. Okay, so I'm so Kratz, you go to fire and you just hear click, 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 click as you depress the trigger. Yep. All right. That sounds like me. Mm. All right. Now for green dot, this though, is an eighties action movie. Yeah. For uh, for green dot though, this is going to be an opposed agility as the blue horror is trying to basically make you easier to push off the edge, brother Harad. Well. All right, two's all they need. So, Brother Harad, uh, if Can I remember this? how interaction attacks work correctly, um, what this means is that their next uh, a, a, a interaction attack against you or their next grapple um, is going to be at an additional, what is it, two? Interactions uh, are either um, on minus one to, or his defense is reduced by one, or his DNs for the next turn are increased by one. That's what we're going to go with then is the increased DN. All right. Can I spend a wrath to reroll that? You could. Is it worth it? Yeah. Nope. That's work. two, so you're tied. So. <clears throat> no, he. Uh, no, he still I only still has have the a one. one. It uh, it updates with more successes. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, everybody's acted except oh. for Mr. Pinkor in the corner. Yep. And I tell you what, I'll spend my last point of ruin that the pink horror is going to light himself on fire. <laughs> and now it is uh, your guys' turn again as a new round. I think I should go first. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to disengage. I'm okay. gonna reload, so yeah. <laughs> because uh, they've been trying to push me off this edge for a while. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna disengage there, and as a multi-action, now that I no longer have a shield, I'm gonna whip out my pistol and uh, shoot this one. Okay. Now I think as part of the interaction attack, you're still at a plus one DN. Yeah, and he's making the, it a multi-action, so it's plus three altogether. Yep. Yeah. Is there anything particularly about falling back and shooting or no? No. Okay. It's within short range, so that's plus one to the attack. Yeah. Plus one dice. Plus one die. That is enough to hit it, even with the plus three. All right. And then uh, some Demai. He'd be able to push that six, wouldn't he? Uh, <laughs> yes, because the DN would be a six. So yeah, you could oh. push that uh, if you wanted to. <clears throat> oh, get one extra die. Yeah, you know what? I will for some extra damage. All right. Because brutal and, is a thing. Yeah, it's brutal, right? Okay. And that That's is an enough. Extra three that, damage. Uh, I'm assuming purple dot is no more. Yeah, it was purple dot. All right, purple dot goes down, and as you already know, when you kill blue, you get frozen. Yeah, they're much easier to deal with. Yeah, they're they're so, kind of cannon father, really, but you know, for these, thematic effect. So the blue lines around that central generator are those? Is that an energy field, or what is that? Uh, that is just to represent that the generator is currently active. Okay. But yeah, uh, that is Brother Harad's turn. Uh, anyone want to spend glory before I move? I do. Okay. Shoot uh, all three. I, I am not going to move in my turn. Uh, I think I'm in range of that blue horror. Let me just double check. I am. So as a multi-action, uh, I'm going to shoot the blue horror and the generator to the shell, Sam. Okay. So I'll just roll that. So... Right hit. Complication. Ooh. I mean, okay. three is what you need. Well, no, I guess three isn't what you need because you're doing a multi attack. Yeah, I... So, do yep. you want to re roll? Yeah, I will burn that last breath. All right. Five is enough. Five is enough. Uh, damage. It let him re roll it this time, too. 
he re-rolled it, even though he's not supposed to re-roll complications. No, it, uh, it didn't re-roll the complication. It, yeah, it kept the graph. Block, oh, okay, I see it. Never mind. The yeah, right. updates for the most recent information. All right, so it looks like you are able to hit the blue horror, and the blue horror, when you hit it with plasma, goes bye-bye. Uh, but you also hit the generator to the south, and the generator begins to spark and hiss, and otherwise depowers uh, now that you've put a significant round into it. So let me change that to red to represent it is offline. And you would notice immediately that the generator in the middle, the dark snow generator, uh, it sort of lowers in intensity. Like it's still spewing out the black snow in a copious amount, but it has slowed down significantly. Or at least enough for mm. you to notice. Hmm. So but we do have a combat complication. So, yes, we do. Uh, what do you got in your inventory there? Grenades. So uh, I've got an inquisitorial rosette, knife, hell gun, plasma pistol, reload. I know exactly what I kit. want to have happen. I know oh, exactly what. Go bye -bye. Your rosette clatters <laughs> to the ground, rolls, and falls off of the edge into the abyss. Can I try and catch it? You may. Uh, it will be a DN3 agility. I will give it a go. Ooh. Okay. It, oh! Sure enough, you dive at the last moment and grab it before it goes sailing into the abyss. And you will say, for thematic sake, you're actually like almost on your belly over the edge kind of a thing. But you mm. are able to grab it before it is lost. Oh, oh. nice. All right. If I lost that, I'd have been pissed off. <laughs> All right. So uh, I believe that is your turn, uh, which means it is time for the frozen and or the pink horror. And I'm not even going to give myself that ruin uh, because I'm going to spend it right away. The pink horror gets even larger. As it continues to light itself on fire. Oh, and God. it is now uh, your guys' turn again. We should do something about that thing as well as the generators. Uh, how do we want to do it? I think you just kill the pink horror. The generators can come last. It's fine. They're not going um, to shoot back anyway. I'm going to <laughs> holler out, Hey guys, don't worry. I think I got this. And uh, sprint up north, mm -hmm. away from the fighting, but towards the generator. And okay. I'm doing a full sprint, so it's three times the normal movement. So if I do this correctly. Do... Also, I don't know if you know this, but if you have your token held down, you can right click and it will automatically do the pathing for you. Oh, well, no, I did not. You can know get that. right here. So I am going to go right there. And that'll be my full turn. Okay. Uh, Kronz, you want to spend to glory or? I don't think we need to. But... No. Yeah, I don't think it's super pressing, but I was thinking about it, but no. Okay. Then, uh, Frozen are just going to sort of walk up to Brother Harad and, uh, slap him for all they're worth, which, you know, they're frozen. Not a whole lot, but we still <laughs> roll it anyway. <laughs> all right. How would you feel about a five? That hits. And it's a critical hit even. All right. Let's roll the critical hit first. If oh. he's frozen, kill <laughs> our space marine. <laughs> I'm going to have words with these. Oh, my God. oh my God. Oh my God. Oh dear. Yeah. Um, do you have I a preference for limb? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, do you want me to roll the even odd number? Or do you want to roll even odd number? Uh, you roll it. I'll take odd. All right, so you get to choose. Um, yeah, I'll lose an arm. Okay, so the frozen maybe you know empowered as is it the was one holding the pistol or the one holding the sword. We'll uh, roll for that in a second. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. He can still pick up the arm that's been tied and hit them with the sword. I just <laughs> yeah. see him picking up his arm, pulling the sword out of it, and then whacking them with his arm. I, all valid things. <laughs> all of these things can happen, but. What happens is Space the Frozen, Marine. maybe because it's empowered as it's popping out of the blue horror, but Brother Hrod, it comes up to you and in a swipe across you in a almost imperceptible, even to your Space Marine uh, biology, it slices upwards and your right arm 
just falls off to the ground. And it deals uh, one mortal wound. And now we roll for actual damage here. If I figure out what I just did with his sheet, there it is. Uh, what is your defense, by the way? Uh, defense is three. Okay. Resilience is six. All right, I can't push for anything, so you would also take six damage. That is exactly my resilience. Then I believe so you would shock. take one shock. All right. And it is now Sister Kronz's turn. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have to retaliate. <laughs> Understandable. I'm within range of both of them, so I've reloaded. Uh, reloading is just a minor action, or no? Yeah. Three. Yeah, it's a, it is a minor, minor action. Minor action. Yeah. So minor. I can't. I can't then aim. Um, okay, cool. So I'm just going to multi action. Mm -hmm. uh, multi action. I'm within twelve for both of them, so an extra attack die. First one. Uh, this one's first one's closest to Harad. Okay. Uh, for purposes. Uh, Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so you hit Brother Harad. Uh, go ahead and complication. You hit Brother Harad. I think that That's is what the complication, is you because do you're hit in Brother Harad. You're in melee. I don't want to beat, beat up Harad again. Can you make the... <laughs> well, so firing into melee, I think, if you do... Uh, yeah, I think that is literally the rule. It's not a complication. Yeah. I mean, if it's literally the rule, it's the rule. Then no, if you, if you roll a complication, that's what happens. You hit your ally that was in melee. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Jesus, okay. Roll yeah. damage. Roll damage. <laughs> yep, roll damage. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, so... God, he's dead. <laughs> I just Rod, killed space break. damage. Uh... That's you a lot shot of him as a back of the head. <laughs> how did I? How did our space marine go from "Oh, I can take on this big pink dude" to a frozen are killing him and his allies are killing him? <laughs> I know what to say, man. It's uh, okay. It's a dark <laughs> It's okay. Oh no! If the wrath die result is a one, the ranged attack is made against a random target in the melee random instead of the target. chosen okay. target. Okay, but that means it's a fifty-fifty. Either yeah, you know, it's a, it's only a one other person in there. Uh, Another I target. In I the wouldn't melee. feel. There's only two people in the melee. Him and the I wouldn't feel target. comfortable with anyone else rolling it except for me because it's my shot. All right, Here. I'll okay. take odds. There's nowhere else for it to um, go. You'll take odds. I'm gonna, yeah. So I'm gonna take even. There's, what I mean is that I don't want Elh to decide like the, to roll the no, even odds. The, I the, should be the one. I agree. Go for here, it. The rules here are: it hits somebody else in the melee. Other than the original target. No, it's a random no. target in the middle. Random. A random so. target random other target. than the original target. There's no, only two uh, it's not in that other than. No, the, there's no in, other than part is, is what I think what George is saying. So Read it's it a random target instead of the chosen target. Yes, the, the chosen, chosen target. target. There's only two things in melee there, Brother Harad and the chosen target. So oh, I understand no, no, no. How, you're under, how you're interpreting those specific words in that specific order. Mm. But I believe the intent is instead of the chosen target being the one hit instead it is distributed randomly yeah as opposed okay. to choosing the target yeah okay i believe That's... your your language your, your language skills are very good <laughs> it's yeah it's totally valid like i, mm -hmm. I but i I'm, i was hearing the same way that george uh said it was mm -hmm. okay right? like uh that that instead of the one that we that i picked it is instead random oh wait no uh, nope the very next uh, sentence in fact proves him correct Choose one of the combatants randomly, excluding the intended target. Then it is hitting Harad. <sighs> All right, okay. so Harad, Never what mind. does 12 damage mean to you exactly? Uh, I have things, I have uh, it means six actual damage, Okay. which is puts me to significantly wounded. Okay. Can you soak any of it? <laughs> I could potentially soak some of it, but then I might get exhausted in addition to wounded. Um, I'll take my. I'll take the next turn for us. Well, no, I can't because we just pushed that. So never mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm so sorry, Harad. I tried. So thematically, <laughs> what I'd like to imagine is Kranz, you slap a new uh, magazine into your bolt gun and you line up a shot on the frozen and you fire. But in your horror, Killed what the happens pilot. is killed this. <laughs> Brother Harad sort of moves in a way you weren't expecting, and his other arm is hit by your bolt gun. The one intact arm. Uh, I'm so sorry, buddy. 
this okay. is going exhausted well. isn't <laughs> terrible and as soon as i can take a turn exhausted is gone because i'll be giving you shock back all right well, yeah. okay, so i'm gonna again. i'm gonna try and soak as much of it as i can okay uh so that is what determination on this yeah. sheet i believe so it's either determination or conviction on this sheet so all right I so can, you can soak three yeah <clears throat> Um, I'm so glad you don't have to spend shock in order to try to soak now. I think that's how it actually used to be in like the original Blessings on Herald module. You had to spend a shock in order to try to soak. Mm -hmm. <gasps> okay, so the way that I'm reading the rule book is shock goes from zero to your maximum level. Mm -hmm. uh, and it says your shock. Uh, you're automatically exhausted if your shock increases beyond your maximum shock. Mm -hmm. So I only have two shock left, but I can soak three. Do I mm -hmm. still soak the three and take three less damage and I go to so, minus yes. one shock? Yes, I believe that is the case, but you're now at negative one shock. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, as that all happens, we still have another frozen on the field. And Brother Harad, you're kind of the opportune target here. So, uh, let's see what happens. Please no complicate, or please no, uh, six again. Okay, okay. Does the six hit you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. And <laughs> you can, uh, my defense is three. So I can shift one of those for an additional damage dice. Uh, roll 20, what you doing? Oh, there it goes. There it is. Uh, so does seven do anything to you? It hurts. Uh, I'm down. I'm at minus one wound. All right. So uh, let's act. I didn't think we'd actually have to get to this, but, you know, that is sort of how the dice have fallen. So damage and dying. All right. So uh, if you suffer more wounds than your maximum wounds, you are dying, which is the case. You are on the verge of expiration, unable to move or fight properly, and will soon perish if you do not receive medical attention. When you are dying, you immediately suffer a memorable injury and fall prone. Whenever you take any amount of damage that would cause you to suffer a wound while dying, you suffer a traumatic injury instead. If you suffer more traumatic injuries than your tier plus one, you die. Uh, you may roll determination when you take damage while dying. If you use determination to reduce any damage you take to zero, you do not suffer a traumatic injury. Now of note, a dying character can be moved by another character if they use a combat action to drag or lift you. Uh, and if you recover any number of wounds, you are no longer dying. But yeah. We gotta heal you. Gotta heal him. But uh, it is a new round, so whoever would like to act. Also, did we determine if I lost the sword or the, the pistol? Uh, let's say the pistol is the one that went down. And you can, as actions while dying, you can crawl. You can make a basic combat action. And you can fall back. And that's the only three things you can do while dying. Okay, so mm -hmm. I would suggest that Sister Krantz take this turn first. To shoot or heal? Shoot. Well, I'm still um, engaged in melee now. Do well, you want to get no, into you... melee so that he can try to crawl away? And then Shank can try <clears throat> to run up and drag him closer to me, and I can run towards him to try to start healing him. That wasn't my intended target, but okay. You can aim That's just a suggestion. But... To get rid of the firing into melee penalties of potentially shooting me. Yeah, if you aim, you can't ignore uh, shooting in the melee. So even if you did roll another complication, it wouldn't hit her rod. Okay, well, hold on. I aimed when I shot. You couldn't have because you had to reload. Right, you had to reload Oh, that's first. right, I had to reload. Oh, oof, never mind. You're right, I forgot. You're right, thank you. Don't worry, I'm tracking how uh, yeah. how completely legally I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
I mean, but it wouldn't be a 40k game if somebody didn't get a limb blown off at least half the time. Especially the Space Marine. Mm -hmm. That's that's our entire job description. Die gloriously. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if you need to become a proper Space Marine, you're going to need to take more bodily injuries so you can get more replacements. Mm -hmm. This guy, he gets it. All right, Kratz, are you going to shoot into melee? This time you can aim, though. You can aim. <laughs> okay. Are you doing it? I think can it's you. Can aim multi attack okay. or is the. Is, yeah, aiming is yeah. a minor action. So you can use multi attack aiming. to target two targets. Yeah, so aiming will give me a plus one, but the multi attack increases the difficulty by two. Correct. Yeah, but that's, that's only a plus one, though. So. so that's what I'm doing. Try spend, try even I like I'm wondering if I should spend one of these glories just uh you more it. than likely still match there you you throw a lot of dice okay. and it's frozen so yeah. say Unfortunately, that Unfortunately, but... four is not enough you needed a five to hit both of them so you I will fire spend my again. last wrath to re-roll ELH all right <laughs> go for it. It. you have three total wrath the two uh, extra well, no, wrath I, I spent a wrath before I I haven't deducted it I'm this I'm down to two. Yeah, now uh, so you're down to two. And yeah. after doing this, I'll be down to one. No. You're you're at three. The the two wrath you got from your power don't bump up. Two is not a maximum amount of wrath. No, I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't get two I gained two wrath from my power, but I gave you one of those three those two wrath that I gained. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. I thought you got two and gave one some. No, I, I gained two and one of those can be given to a friend. Right. Mm -hmm. Um so I will spend uh one of my second wrath here to reroll, because that is <laughs> well there we go cannot reroll i didn't mean i think i accidentally double clicked the yeah, reroll double clicked but um, but, um <clears throat> there's a there's that's a complication i believe i mean you do succeed but there is a combat complication so go ahead and roll damage can't and shoot harad again yeah he you cannot shoot <laughs> harad again. that's the good thing is you cannot <laughs> shoot him again <laughs> silver linings <laughs> Sister okay. firing wildly uh, into combat. Here. I apparently, I what the hell? I'm like, cool, I'm gonna be a character. You're redefining fine. spray and pray. That's the wrong yeah. kind of prayer. <laughs> oh lord, that's amazing, Ben. <laughs> I am. So, yeah, I I don't know what to do. I thought I was. I thought I was uh, like reasonable at this game. <laughs> apparently, okay. Um, fifteen damage. Yeah, which is enough that as you spray and pray and, uh, as we're flavoring it, you do down both of the frozen. And, and uh, the but your complication is you hear click, 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 click. Are you for real? <laughs> I'm literally like out of reloads now. You, in fact, did spray and pray, and both of them worked. Mm -hmm. But I, I no. think you're out of ammo, aren't you? I, I am, and I'm a, my order told us to shoot with our eyes closed. <laughs> The emperor will guide. <laughs> oh. oh lord! All right, do you guys want to spend glory for someone else to act, or is it the pink horror's turn? I'll uh, go if you want. <laughs> I will go. All right. Uh, I'm gonna move. Uh, let me just measure it. All right, I'm gonna move near Brother Harad, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna save you or try and heal you in any kind of way. Because I don't care. <laughs> As you come by and <clears throat> I see that you're probably about to shoot the other thing, I say, yeah. continue the fight. I'll be fine. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> As I'm sitting there, one arm. Sure, dude. <laughs> down one arm with a bolt round exploding my, my shoot. <laughs> you know, Shut up, I'm aiming. <laughs> you can stop moaning down there. I need to concentrate. Oh, right, this is the thing I wanted. It's like the so, guy who's so loud in the stall next to you. So this will be a long range shot. Okay. So it will not be a multi action, but it will be long range. So it's, uh, uh, so it's a bit more difficult. So roll the uh, roll to hit. Five uh, is enough. Five is enough. And I'll roll damage. And let's see. So 17, it gets rid of three armor. It has that much resilience, so it takes that damage. All right, so you deliver a powerful shot to this thing, 
and you burn off the entire left side of its sort of quivering mass. Um, but it quickly reforms and produces new tentacles and new appendages that defy explanation. So you definitely hit it. You dealt a good amount of damage to it, but it's still standing. Okay, I end my turn. All right. So I like can't fire twice. <laughs> It is going to be the Pink Horror's turn, and I do have one ruin from that complication earlier. So what it's going to do is it's going to move up, and it's going to light itself on fire. So it gets even bigger, and it gains... This is its third time doing that, or fourth time? Uh, let's see. This is its third time doing it. How many wounds does it have left? Uh, well, so the mechanic I've been doing, just to sort of peel back the screen, is every time it large, enlarges itself, it gains six more wounds. Awesome. So right now it's um, it's at half wounds. I don't mind telling you guys that. But yeah, uh, that's its entire turn. So uh, which one of you would like to go next? Brother Harad's going to go next. <clears throat> All right. What are you going to do, Brother Harad? Can I grab the bolt pistol from my severed arm? and fire it you can't see the target from where you're at yeah i was gonna say i think oh. well no i would say well yeah you're out of line of sight yeah you you're out of line of sight unfortunately yeah can i grab the bolt pistol from my severed arm you, you certainly can towards the medic uh i will grab the bolt pistol from my severed arm and i will crawl my Bleeding behind over into this area here. Okay. Getting further away from the medic. Gotcha. All right, Torvian, do you, uh, well, I guess it is just your turn because the pink core is the only thing left on the field. So, yeah, Torvian, what's your turn? All right. Um, I'm going to, I thought you said if I. If I pick up and right click, it'll give me the measure, but it didn't. So... Well, you have to be holding the token in with left click, and then you right click once to set a waypoint, and then you right click again. Yeah. Every time you right click, it puts more way waypoints. Mm -hmm. Why are you not? Okay, so got it selected. Yeah, if I were to borrow cross here for got a it. moment, okay. if yeah. it's done correctly. It does something like that. Okay, so I'm moving there. Okay. And that's at a sprint, so that's all I can do. Alrighty. So, round number six of this combat, the pink horror is going to float over yonder. And, uh, hey, Mr. Shank. How you doing there, buddy? Oh! <laughs> Alright, so, uh, yeah. Yep, it is. Yeah. Right. That looks like a hit. Uh, you have a three or four defense, I forget. It's four, but it doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, it does. It matter, does, because so, yeah. that's how many I can shift. So I can shift <laughs> yeah, four. two of those. Yeah. Uh, you're going to take 11, and you're on fire again. Right, I will try and suck again. I think um, that's two of us down, isn't it? So um, sucking's determination again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think so. All right, so you would be one soaking damage. one of those right now. So I well, one. how much? Oh, hold on. I He's... took 11, so yeah, one. He has a good resilience. Mm, fair. Yeah, I'm, I've got a nine resilience. I'm covered in carapace. <laughs> okay, so your resilience is way higher than mine. Never mind. All right. Yeah, so I'm a pretty tough cookie. All right. Okay, so you went. Well, now it's a new round, so all four of you can so act Pink as you Horror wish. Pink went twice that round. No, it was a new round. No, it was a, so... the top of a new round. <laughs> okay, I mean, so it just happened that we ended, so it went. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like at this point, spend a wrath in order to get his monster to go first. Uh, I mean, I think technically yes. Just give me the next round. I think technically we start the round, but eh, whatever. I mean, I'm I'm basically doing it like that way. It's not just you guys continuously. Like they do have to get a turn in. So if you end the round, yeah. then the enemy starts the next round. Okay. 
Um, um, so I'm going to go ahead and take the first action to try to <clears throat> resurrect Brother Harad, unless anybody okay. has any objections to that. I mean, I want to do the same thing. I'm literally out of reloads, I have, which is probably a good thing for this party in the way I'm rolling. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I would like to help out. I'll, maybe I'll top off any healing afterwards. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do the... But the just, so you, just so you know what I'm going to be doing so that influences the turn. Uh, Brother Hod will, from his crawling position, one hand in his bolt pistol, will uh, look over to Sister Krantz and say, Take the sword! Yay, you got six wounds back, I think. That's, that's a lot of wounds. Let me double check that. I'm pretty sure it's one plus however many I rolled. Right, but I think isn't there a high DN because he is dying or at least heavily wounded? Because I know there used to be one in like Dark Heresy and Rogue Trader no, and all that. No, this, um, hold on a sec. I believe that the Medicaid skill is literally just give wounds back. I don't think it's a DN for anything. Page 124 for Medicaid. Make a DN3 to restore. Yeah, it's just it's DN3 to restore wounds. Okay. Um, and then it's... Oh, it's one wound. And then I can shift exalted icons to restore additional wounds. So it's not as many as I thought. That's my bad. It's more um, than... I'm mm. back up. It's literally one wound. I am not dying. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> okay. Do we have any glory left? You we have, have one glory left. Can I see the initiative, please? Well, you don't need to because the only enemy has already acted. So it's okay, just... So. But I would say, Shank, if you go next, you are going to take 1d3 more to wounds because you are on fire. Uh, Granted. Okay. Roll me the 1d3. All right. So, mortal wounds. You're going to take a grand total of three mortal wounds as you continue to be on fire. Can I possibly choke those? Uh, no, no mortal wounds, wounds you cannot you can know, Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Oh, the oh, Brother Harad could stand up and tackle him to the ground and douse him. And, 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 and I, could, uh, I could do it. Oh. I'm on my last wound, but okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to move closer to the horror. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> and I'm going to overcharge my plasma pistol. I love it. I love it. Don't roll a complication, please. Or the Emperor, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, very nice. That's a crit. That is indeed a crit. Alright, uh, I'll add three extra damage dice. Uh, it's DBD. Yeah, bonus damage. Mm -hmm. DBD. DBD. And yeah, how do you want to do this? <clears throat> so... As I'm burning, I feel no pain, and I just walk up and just go, fire. As right. I disengage all the safety um, uh, safety features of the plasma pistol. <laughs> all right. So your pistol begins to glow with a terrible green light, maybe mixed with a little blue, as it overcharges, and everybody hears a very high-pitched whine as the plasma pistol barks and disgorges a massive bolt of plasma that hits the pink core in what is essentially its face region. And the pink core lets out a terrible, terrifying scream as it is immolated and no longer for this world. That's so awesome. And you guys are out of combat, but I need to know who's running over and putting out Shank. Well, well I will. The Harad is actually going to run over... <laughs> Oh my god. I'm going to drop to my knees and pistol. just fall to the floor. Yeah, right, and so as Shank. he's falling, Brother Hod will you know, rip off his cloak and just smother him with the cloak. I one arm. let that happen. So yeah, you guys... One uh... arm cloak smothering. Well, one arm and the oh. size of a transhuman. Yeah, <laughs> that's a... Damn. <laughs> okay. This whole campaign, we're like, we got it, we got it, we got it, and then this fight, we don't got it. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Dice decided to freaking kill us. <laughs> this yeah. battle. Jeez. I had it. <laughs> True. Plasma I mean, pistol. I'm fine, but... <clears throat> Sorry, man. I'm, I'm almost dead. <laughs> I mean, me too, but it's fine. Oh, yeah. Not Speaking of memorable injuries, uh, you do take a memorable injury, uh, Brother Harad. 
Uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, D6. Your missing arm just wasn't memorable enough. Yeah. yeah. If your memorable wasn't enough. All right. He rolls another arm. All right. So it looks <laughs> like uh, you have a battle scar now in addition to your missing arm. Come on, if I roll up a memorable entry as well. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, as I'm, I'm as Brother Rod is putting out uh, Adrian Shank, uh, he'll look over shoulder and say, <clears throat> "Private Torvian, the generator's sister, take up the sword. Use it to, to destroy the generators as well." I, I would already be heading towards the generators to get them disabled because these two are stabilized at this point. Mm-hmm. And I'll be taking the sword then. Yeah. So Which is I like would a great say sword. that. Uh, the memorable in- injury you just rolled there, uh, Shank, it doesn't really make sense because it says you would have a broken draw, a broken jaw, which you were on on fire, kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, more of a burn. Yeah. Let's give injury? you a focus burn. Let's say uh, your left side is uh, quite um, scarred at this point. Crispy. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's not all bad, and this is for Brother Harad too. Um, Whenever you reveal your memorable injury, you gain plus one bonus die on intimidation willpower tests. Um, Follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Is being incinerated by the coruscating flame? Coruscating flames? Is there any corruption related to that? Yes, but we're going to handle that after you guys have resolved this entire scene. Sure. Okay. So, rolling to disable this first one. I would say that at this point, you could just more or less disable all of them, either yeah. shooting them or blowing them up. And as you get through maybe the fifth or sixth one, you can tell that the power uh, on the generator has pretty much gone to um, a standstill. And the generator is now no longer uh, disgorging a copious amount of black snow in fact it's barely sputtering at this point all right i'm gonna come over here and see what i can do to completely disable it make sure that it can't be activated again once we leave okay uh we'll take your seven tech check there that uh you could potentially set this thing to overload but there's also something odd about the overload sequence that it opens up the top part of the machine you don't really know what that means but it's part yeah, of the I don't overload want to sequence. overload it. I want to disable it. If I overload it, that means there's going to be a huge explosion and a further gout of this nasty nonsense black snow stuff. I mm-hmm. want to disable it so it cannot be turned on again. Okay. Um, I would say it's doable. Um, but why don't you go ahead and roll me an investigation here? Let's see if you notice something. Uh, nope. No, you don't notice whatever you it was. <laughs> but yeah. If you have a wrath, maybe four dice um, might be worth it. All right. Yeah, I'll spend my last wrath to reroll. All right. And I get no extras. Seven <laughs> successes. Very nice. Psych. <laughs> so what you notice is that there is a power source in this generator that is unlike anything you've ever seen before. If you had to guess, it's almost as if someone took the same sort of technology behind a Geller field and miniaturized it to contain something. I'm going to try to remove that without breaking it. So you want to turn off the Geller field kind of a thing. Hey, guys, you in the mood for, for a little bit more fight fight? A little slight more, a uh, little bit more shooty stuff. If there are more enemies oh. of the Emperor, then we must destroy them. The reason I ask is because it looks like this thing here, you, you all know how Gellerfield works, right? Basically, it holds the warp outside of a ship as you're flying through the warp, right? More or less. This is basically looks like it's a Geller cage where it's holding warp something inside of it. Don't break it yet. Please. You want me to just leave <laughs> yeah. it here then? We can report this to Veronius. Take it with us. If we take it with us, I'm disconnecting it from its power source. 
<sighs> I'm just gonna lie down in the snow. <laughs> Are we in immediate danger right now? Not unless you disconnect the power source. Do we want to take a hour respite so that we can get some wounds taken care of and everything? I think, I think that's the move. We sure, dress we, our wounds. That we can we can dress wounds up, get y'all back on your feet, and then we can figure out what to do with this thing. I believe that's a wise choice. Okay. Actually, I have a uh, I have a cinematic way to wrap things up if you guys are interested. Yeah, it depends right. how cinematic are we talking. Yeah, it depends on any <laughs> cinematic, or are we talking? I think you'll like it, but you'll <laughs> how also more be injured. Like... Does Brother Harad get? <laughs> there would be no injuries on the field. Okay. So let's say he you guys some falls off the spot. <laughs> <laughs> So let's say you guys begin to do to regroup. You begin the process of healing one another, of recuperating your wounds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and Torvian, as you're working on the machine, trying to figure out a way to safely disengage it, what happens is you notice the Geller field is beginning to flicker. And what happens is you hear a clunk and you look up and you see that the upper part of the machine is opening up. And inside... Uh, the option got taken away. Inside is a creature which should look very familiar to those of you who are paying attention to the stream right now. You guessed it, it's Ignatrix herself. Lady of Change emerges from the uh, the Geller cage, as you put it. Sort of does one of those long stretches and goes, Rrr. oh, well, this is nice. Also, just as planned. I'm going to go now. You guys have fun dealing with his arm thing. And she snaps her taloned fingers, and the Lady of Change vanishes into nothingness. And Why the generator the falls she defunct. Was lying to herself. Mm -hmm. I mean, she yeah. plans to get captured and then saved by us. That is uh, that is where we'll end the session, as you guys yeah. are obviously able to call up for uh, evac at this point. But yeah, what did you guys think? That was a tough fight. It was. That was a good fight. That fight was a lot harder than it really should have been. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Completely <laughs> honest. Yeah, I didn't help. Um, Friendly fun, <laughs> sister. I would like to. I would like to humbly request that you spend a little bit more time at the range when we're back on the ship. <laughs> <clears throat> there. It's okay. There with you. I do. I don't hold it against you. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, to give you guys a heads up what's coming for you. So next session uh, will be completely sort of role play opportunities because you guys are going to go back to the flotilla, A, to get Brother Harad a new arm, and B, to pick up a potential new team member. So be prepared for like pure role play next session where you guys are going to be driving the action more than it will be me driving the action kind of a thing. Fantastic. Um, but yeah. Any other people, any other comments people would like to make on stream before I cut it? No, I had fun. No, no, I was, yeah, it was great. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first arc of the Depths of Trollius. We will be back next week with the beginnings of part two. Thanks for watching and see you later stream.